Boom, we are live. What's up, guys? We got Tristan Tate on the podcast. So I am excited because this is one of the most highly requested podcasts that I've had, I think, pretty much ever. So I'm excited to get Tristan on. Uh, you know, Tristan is the Tate brothers are known for a lot of different things. Uh, and, you know, if we talk about everything, this could be like a 20 hour conversation. So we're mainly going to focus on, I would say, game and business. Those are going to be the two topics we're going to heavily uh, focus on. But without further ado, let's welcome Tristan on. Thank you for coming on, dude. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I know we've been trying to do this for a while, but uh, I'm a very busy man. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, as I said, I'm, I'm half of the Tate brothers, but my name is Tristan Tate. I live in Bucharest, Romania, self-made multimillionaire, uh, international playboy. Uh, I'm the real deal as well. I fucking hate people who pretend to live like I do. So I make that a very vocal point of that as well. And uh, all around, you know, very nice guy, but I, I'm, I'm not too familiar with the Playing With Fire podcast, which is good. Which means you could throw curveballs and hit me with whatever questions you like. Uh, people from the audience, of course, can hit me with whatever questions they like as well. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here to talk, man. Ask me anything. Yeah, sweet. Uh, so, okay. So I want to start off with this. So you guys are known, uh, you guys made like pretty much, you know, a lot of your money from the webcam thing, right? Yeah. So how did that, how did that whole thing begin initially? Like, how do you guys come up with the idea of the webcam business model? Well, so uh, yeah, we made we we, we made our first million dollars in adult entertainment in the live broadcast webcam girl industry. And uh, today, most of you people watching will be familiar with this because you'll understand there are websites like OnlyFans and you know a few webcam platforms where girls can broadcast themselves. But eleven years ago, when this began, this was nowhere near as big. When I started eleven years ago, I used to explain to girls what a webcam model was, and I'd have to sit there for half an hour. Most people didn't know what they were, apart from our customers, of course. But um, essentially, my me and my brother have always done very well with women. Uh, we were kickboxing champions. I was the European champion. My brother was the world champion. We had a bunch of pretty girlfriends. And it was a brainwave of Andrews, actually. He saw, I think he met a webcam model who was making a bunch of money um, that he was just dating in real life. Uh, and he, he became familiar with the process. And he said to these girls, uh, he said to this girl, you know, why, do you, why don't you work at home? Why do you work at a webcam studio? And she explained, you know, the professional setups uh, the for tax reasons, uh, you know, the, the administration staff. It's a very complicated business. It's not as simple as a girl at home on a laptop. And I just thought, you know what, Tristan, we can do this. Let's tell our girlfriends that they're webcam models and let's start a small studio in, the, in our house. So we had a small flat at the time. I had two girls working in my bedroom, girlfriends of mine, one in one corner, one in the other with the sound off. Andrew had a similar setup running. And uh, three years later, we were making two or $3 million a year profit. And that was certainly the beginning of our uh, success in terms of the, the multi-million dollar success shit that you see on my Instagram nowadays, you know, the Bugatti and the supercars, et cetera. That was the catalyst that, that drew it all. But yeah, I, I've always been very, very good with women and I played to my strength. Some people are good with women. Some people are good with numbers. Some people are good with stocks. Some people are good with, you know, whatever. Some people are good chefs and they open restaurants. Play to your strength. And, that, and that's what made me my money. Wait, so were you like more like a natural growing up? Like you just like lost your virginity early on in life and you just always had like success with chicks? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say necessarily early on. I was 16 years old, but I was never that, Um, you know, I grew, I grew up a little bit late. Maybe at 14, 15, I was still a bit boyish. Six, uh, it, didn't, it wasn't until I was about 16 where I started becoming more of a man, I guess. But yeah, I mean, I wasn't... So much of an early starter, but I've always been naturally good with women. People ask me, you know, what books did you read? Uh, what coaches did you have? Uh, none, zero. I fell naturally into this weird space in Twitter where everyone started talking about me and talking to me. Uh, but that just happened for me just put, putting myself out there in the world. I, I, I've i never had a coach. I've never, you know, read a game book. I just naturally have always had beautiful girlfriends. So I didn't start the webcam studio until I was 23, but I was already doing very well with women at the time. You can imagine I'm 23 years old. I tell three girls to come and work for me in the same room and get naked. One said no and broke up with me, boo-hoo. Uh, and, and two said yes. And they were both, we were running that game for a very long time. Uh, one of them worked for me for seven years, I think. Made me over half a million dollars, $700,000 maybe just by herself. So my game's always been strong. It's always been strong. And I, I don't know why I... I don't know why it's so good. I'm just naturally good with women. But a lot of hard work goes into my lifestyle as well. I know my lifestyle and who I am and my physique attracts women, but that's all hard work, isn't it? Yeah. So was the business proposition early on like, hey, listen, we're going to take care of the marketing for you and the promotion. And, uh, you know, we collect a management fee or something like that. Was that the basic? Yeah, it, it's always people who don't understand the business who will say something as, as asinine as, oh, you ran webcam models. Why don't they just work by themselves at home? No successful webcam model works by herself at home. 
the illusion on every cam feed is that it's a girl alone in her bedroom. That's an illusion that we sell. <laughs> but that's no different to me saying to a guy who works at McDonald's making burgers, bro, you work at McDonald's making burgers. Why don't you fuck McDonald's off and just make burgers by yourself and sell them to the customers and you get to keep all the money? It doesn't work that way. You need the websites. That's the McDonald's restaurant. And the McDonald's restaurant needs the management and the cleaners. And the that's me and what I take care of if you know what I mean. So all yeah. webcam studios are typically very professional setups and they're very complicated and they take a lot of hard work. This wasn't easy money. Any business that makes you millions of dollars profit per year is going to be difficult to run. And this was no exception. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think, I think the people have this idea that your business was like super duper easy where you just like basically like just got like 20 chicks together from day game or something like that, put them in a room threw like a webcam in there and said, okay, guys, make me some money bitches. But like, yeah. In, yeah, in reality, I can imagine it being like a lot of different complex factors that you have to like, you know, kind of juggle. Oh, um, incredi it's, it's incredibly complicated. It's incredibly sure. complicated. And, and I can have a, and, and you know, we were in a situation where the girl who was actually online, the girl who people could physically see at the time on the, on feed made 50% of the money. She got paid 50% and then I would keep another 50%, but that had to go towards the building rent all the equipment costs, uh, my profit would com compound back into buying new cameras, et cetera. It would go into uh, all the management, all the girls who are typing behind the scenes, all the girls who are WhatsApping the customers behind the scenes. So, you know, the girl online made a bunch of money, but any girl working for me, 50% of what she made was much more than 100% of what she would have made right, by herself. Right. So it, there was it, people assume that I'm taking these girls who can make loads of money, tricking them and keeping half for myself. That isn't how it works. You know, the system actually accelerated these models to superstar, superstar status. And once they were there, there was enough money for everybody to eat. I mean, some of my girls are making 35, 40, $50,000 every month for themselves. And I was making a healthy profit on top of that. So it was win-win. And it was, a, it was a fun lifestyle at the time. I had to take my foot off the gas because we ran 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year for about five and a half years straight. So you can imagine traveling, driving, all the stuff I love doing now, flying on private jets to Dubai and taking some time off, that that was almost impossible. So my life was really committed to work. But uh, we had a lot of fun and I met a lot of great women uh, through, through, the, through the business as well. So, And I made a lot of money, so I can't complain. So what is your business now? Do you guys just mainly just like live off investments now or do you, what do you guys do nowadays? Yeah, well, the webcam business, you can actually start it with very little money. So when people say it takes money to make money, that is true in a lot of circumstances, um, but we essentially started our webcam studio by buying a few a few um, cameras from an electronics store using our existing laptops and keyboards we had at home. You know, the investment was no more than a couple hundred bucks, and we made our money back within 24 hours. Uh, that, when I started making serious money, that's when I accelerated it and make a, made a bunch more money. So uh, people who who watch me and know me know that I run a chain of casinos. Uh, here in Bucharest, that's very, you know, that's the, the house always wins, as you can imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I make a lot of money through that. Uh, I've got some things uh, online that I do as well. And, you know, I'm, I'm very heavy into cryptocurrency also. You know, I invested a lot of money in cryptocurrency a good few years ago, which made me a few million dollars. But again, I had the initial millions to put in. I didn't just catch some weird pump on $5 and get lucky, you know. Mm -hmm. with, yeah. with the growth of cryptocurrency, that grew my net worth also. Okay. But yeah, the, the webcam models, I still make money running an OnlyFans management agency. So some of the top uh, OnlyFans models in the world work for me. I'm not going to say any of their names. Uh, any of stalkers of mine may put their names in the chat, but whatever. But I'm not going to say their names because if I say their names, it, it, they lose income and they lose fans when people realize that they're actually working for me at the end of the day. But I still run a very big business through OnlyFans. And you can always, uh, if you need verification, OnlyFans follow about 500 people on Instagram. And they're followed by like 13 million. I'm one of the people they follow because they know me and I manage some of their top girls. So that is a lot easier to do remotely than the physical webcamming where the girl has to be at the office on time, on camera, eight hours a day, changing shifts, changing girls. OnlyFans is a lot more hands off for me. So I like it that way. Okay. So the question I wanted to ask is, um, like, I know you mentioned in other interviews that, for example, you started, like, when the when the webcam thing started taking off, you started using the referral system, right, which is really smart. So basically, you were having, you know, like, your top earning girls introduce you to other chicks, yes. uh, which makes sense. Like, that's, like, that basically, like, that's what you want to do. But yeah. what did you do to get the initial girls? Like, how did you meet the initial girls before you had the luxury of having girls introduce you to other girls? Well, the initial girls were girlfriends of mine. And the next maybe the next maybe 10 to 15 models that I hired 
were just girls that I knew from my past. I mean, I was 23 years old. I'd met a lot of women in my time. And um, I just told every woman who I uh, knew, every woman from my hometown in England, hey, I know you're working at the hair salon. Well, this is what I'm doing now. This model is making this much money. Why don't you come and, and, and give it a try? So I've always had women in my phone book and in my database. So the initial women, yeah, it was just girls I knew. But I didn't necessarily use my top models to attract new girls. Girls would message my top models. So they had these relatively big Instagram accounts, 30, 40, 100,000 followers sometimes. And girls would look at them and say, wow, you've got the Chanel bag and the shoes, etc. What do you do? And, the, and my girls would literally reply, or the managers who ran the accounts would reply to the models, uh, reply to my future prospects. Well, I'm a webcam model. I work at this studio here in Bucharest. Would you like to come and give it a try? So it was very, very easy. Once the ball started rolling and I made my reputation, I mean, I have now girls with millions of followers, porn actresses, et cetera, message me in my DMs. Hey, I know you run the Sony fans management agency. I'm not doing too well on OnlyFans. Can you help me? Sometimes mm -hmm. I say yes. Sometimes I say no, depending on what I think their attitude is like. But now I have a reputation for it. It's just, it's just way too easy. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Interesting. Do you, do you guys, you guys bang all the girls before like you uh, work with them, right? Or what's the, what's, what's not necessarily, but I end up banging them anyway. Um, of course, me and my brother, we don't share women and we don't share underwear. Everyone knows we share a big house or a few big houses. That's, that's interesting. Uh, we, we, yeah, we share cars, we share a bunch of stuff. We don't share underwear and we don't share women. So half the women he ended up sleeping with and half the women I end up sleeping with. And that wasn't necessarily like you have to have sex with me to be part of the webcam studio, but women like me. This is the problem. So they live in this house. They oh. work for me all the time. In their spare time, they're coming to clubs and bars and restaurants with me and sitting having glasses of wine with me. Like, what do you think is going to happen? They're not going out in the real world meeting these nerds who they're talking to on webcam all day, are they? Right. So they deal with these beta male losers all day. And then they have to hang around me at the end of the evening. Of course, they end up sucking my dick. Like, that's, it's, it's a no-brainer. But it wasn't necessarily part of the job. And if a girl had a boyfriend or a girl, you know, wasn't interested in either me or my brother, cool. I don't give a fuck. Work your shift, work your job. It's not like it wasn't part of the contract, but it did happen uh, with 90% of my models, I say. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, okay. Interesting. So you, you mentioned you guys don't share girls. What other, cause this is, I, I'm imagining you, you're living in the house. There's a bunch of chicks there. You and your yeah. brother are like, what other rules did you guys have in the house to like avoid drama and weird situations? Like, I'm curious, like what, what like rules and restrictions you guys had? Well, well, me and Andrew, because we grew up together, there's no, we don't have any rules for each other and the way each other behave. We're, we're yin and yang with a perfect team. And we've always worked very, very well together. So we've never had to impose any rules of, of what we do and what we don't do. Um, you know, the moment we could see one of the girls was interested in either of us, you know, the other one, you know, it was just easy. And that was it. That was that was Tristan's girl. or That was Andrew's girl. And that's just the way it naturally happened. But um, rules for the women. See, that's complicated. If you try to run a business where you have at any one time 60, 70, 80 girls working for you, that's a massive headache. Yeah. So you, you couldn't be too soft on them. Yeah. If any girl fucked up, and uh, upset anyone too much or argued with another girl too much or crossed any lines, uh, you had to fire her. And you had to fire her in front of all the other girls and you had to make a big fucking deal out of it. <laughs> we actually used to throw parties every time we fired a girl or every time a girl left. Um, we throw these parties because all the other girls who worked for us knew if she fucks up and I kick her out or if she quits the job, the next day we're all going to be having a big party saying, all right, good, weak blood is gone, that bitch is gone. And it actually, put, it actually makes women more loyal to the cause. So, you know, besides being ruthless about who you fire, you have to be able to, to say no to a pretty face because women will, if you're a weak man, these women will walk all over you. I'm telling you. But uh, yeah, running a camp studio was easy for a man like me. But I've always had this abundance mindset. I could always replace them with new girls. I could always get new women. So, you know, the girls who left, maybe some of you are watching now. I never missed you that much. Don't worry. I, yeah, I can imagine the minute you become weak and you start like simping, like the whole business just goes down the drain. Like it's a constant. Do you feel like, did you feel like it was almost like a constant, like a uh, power struggle in a way where like the girls were trying to like take a little power and you kind of had to like, like I'm almost imagining like a Game of Thrones type of scenario where there's like yeah. this unspoken power struggle that's going on at all times. Do you find it was kind of like that? Well, I'd say it was more than, uh, it was more than that. It was more of a power struggle amongst each other. So girls are very jealous and girls are very possessive. So if you yes. think there's maybe perhaps at any one time 15, 20 women in throughout my, my network of houses that I'm sleeping with, they know who I spend more time with. They know who I like the more, more. They know who I see more. And you'd have to reward hard work and reward loyalty and lack of drama with your time and attention. Uh, if there was a girl who's a nine out of 10, who's acting up and acting like a fool and a girl who's a seven out of 10, who's been good, you got to take the seven out of 10 out to dinner right. and you got to fuck her at the end of the night. 
So it was a power struggle amongst each other. Because uh, these women were trained professionally, of course, by me on how to ex how to manipulate and exploit men. That was essentially their job. Uh, but it, it, obviously, they knew it was never going to work on me. It's like, you know, learning Kung Fu and trying to beat up your Kung Fu master. You're not right. going to do it because he's going to whoop your ass. So they never tried anything with me. But amongst each other, yeah, there was always fucking games being played, man. It was a massive headache. But I look back with a big smile. I look back with a big smile. It made me over, Jesus, I don't know, $15 million plus. Like, I made so much money doing it. So, uh, yeah, real pleasant memories. That's and crazy. I miss, I miss so many of those women as well. I miss That's crazy much. how much money there is in simping. Like, how many dudes are willing to pay money for, like, chicks, like, all that shit. It blows my mind. Um, so what, what are, like, some of the things you mentioned you taught, like, uh, the girls, like, how to uh, manipulate the dudes and extract as much money? What were some of the specific things that you taught them? Well, I mean, it's very simple things, actually. Th things that you think as a, as, a, as a business person, because I'm a businessman, I'm a salesman. Uh -huh. uh, things that you would think were very self-explanatory. You take a new girl online and they'd say uh, a customer would say, you know, what kind of guys are you into? And she'd be like, oh, I like that Channing Tatum from fucking Magic Mike or whatever movie was popular at the time. Or I like guys like the guy from Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm like, no, wrong. That's <laughs> not what you like. I like you short Find out who the customer <laughs> is. And then you like that. So if the customer is an old man, you'd say, oh, I want an older, more sophisticated man. These young guys just want to use me for sex. If it's a young guy, you'd say, oh, I'm sick of all these old creeps on webcam. You know, they creep me out. I'm so happy a young, handsome guy like you is in the room. You know, so basic shit that you think would be second nature. But women, you know, they, they need management and they need help. Women are not business minded and they didn't know how to how to conduct themselves. So really, really basic shit like that. Dude, that's so funny. Like, like you teach the girl to say like, oh, I really like an old bald guy who jerks off to me on webcams. That's what Basically. I'm really into. And the guy's like, oh, sweet. Like, exactly, yeah. exactly. But the truth is the girls didn't like anybody who jerked off on webcam. You get oh, young, handsome yeah. dudes on there getting their dick out and they just think this guy is a loser. Yeah. It didn't matter, you know, at that at the point at that they've been doing this job for a while and listening to the things that these guys say, didn't matter how handsome or muscular you were, if you appear on webcam and you get your dick out, these women know you're a loser. I was about to say think yeah. you're a loser. No, they know you're a loser. And they and and they are losers. My customer base was was losers. Like someone like me would never do that, but that's why I could run a business like this. I was speaking with with Sterling Cooper the other day about the adult entertainment industry, and I said that's the one industry. Almost every industry in the world, if you have a real passion for the product and you really have a serious interest in the industry and a serious interest in the content, it will help you. If you have a very serious interest in cars, you're going to become a better mechanic. If you have a very serious, serious interest in delicious food, you're going to become a better chef. But in the adult entertainment industry, it's the one of the only industries in the world where it's the opposite. If you have an interest in webcam girls, an interest in pornography, an interest in masturbation, an interest, it's going, you're never going to make money doing this. You have to be a guy like me or you're never going to pull it off. So Yeah, no, that's a good point. I think there's a few other industries like that, like the pharmaceutical yeah. industry. Like I think the people who are the heads of like Pfizer and Merck. Yep, yep. They're, they're yeah. like, yeah, we, we're not going to fucking take any of this dumb shit with you. Exactly. That's for the uh, drug dealers industry. also. If you have a massive interest in cocaine, you're never going yeah. to become a successful cocaine dealer. Yeah. So drug dealers are also, you know, so any vice, I think, vice vice is the, is the key word. You have an interest in gambling, you're probably not going to open your own casino. You've got an interest in, you know, drinking yourself to death. You're probably not going to run a successful bar or pub or nightclub. So, yeah. you know, vices are, are dangerous in that way. But adult entertainment is certainly like that. Yeah, I mean, dude, it blows my mind. Like, how many dudes think that they can get the girl from like simping? Like, they're like, oh, if I just like pay enough money to her OnlyFans and I just jerk off to her enough, she's gonna like me. And ah, it's like it'll never happen. Like, the girl. Well, I'll tell you an industry loser. secret. So, of course, I never ran anything like this. I really didn't. I swear. I swear to God. But uh, webcam models are webcam models, and escorts are escorts. But some escorts will webcam model. It's not that webcam models are escorts because they're really not. A lot of them are happily married. I've had virgins work for me, girls with a body count of one. I mean, I was that one, you know, I've taken their virginities, et cetera. But I've had really great, wonderful girls work for me. But escorts and prostitutes will do a bit of webcam modeling also, just like escorts and prostitutes will also be barmaids and hostesses and, you know, hairdressers and whatever else it is. So the simps will sometimes throw a bunch of money at a girl who's working for some fucking... I don't know. I don't even want to say, I don't want to say the word. It was working for some disgusting pimp out in Texas somewhere. And he'll send the girl to go fuck the customer. So these guys, because it will work with one girl, they'll think it will work with more. So that actually helps my business a lot. It helps it a lot that there are some girls on webcam that are actually willing and only fans who are willing to meet customers for money.
because my girls weren't because my girls were mine. That was it. They were never going to meet anyone for money. But the fact that there were people in the industry willing to do it made my job so much easier because these customers who would throw money at all these girls and have one ratchet chick from Alabama show up at their house and suck their dick would think, oh, maybe this 10 out of 10 blonde Ukrainian who lives over there in Bucharest, maybe I can fly over there and fuck her too. You know, it, I mean, it never worked, but it certainly did help the illusion. Yeah, the fantasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's like a lottery system. Like you can technically win the lottery, right? But you're not really going to win. Like the, odds yeah. are small. the lottery of a, of a lonely webcam girl in her room who's going to fall in love with you when you throw money at her. Zero percent. It could technically happen, but it's not. I, it could. Yeah. It could technically happen. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah but right. lightning could technically strike me three times when I walk out of this fucking place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's like the yeah. illusion. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I, see, I see your point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And women are, women are d- turned off by it and they're disgusted by it. They really are. So like... They don't want to see these. They don't want to meet these dudes in real life. They creep them out. Dude, what do you think about like how like I think, I don't know, kind of my observation has been the last 20 years, like dudes are becoming more and more simpy. Like I think there's more and more dudes who are like doing this, like jerking off to chicks online and yeah. not meeting girls in real life. And just like it just it just feels and like some of these guys, like when you hear the stories, like I hook up with chicks. Right. And they'll tell me stories. Oh, I met this one guy. Uh, you know, a few months ago, and they'll tell me the stories. I'm like, this cannot be real. There's no way this guy, you know, simped this yeah. bad. And they're like, no, he simped that bad. And I'm like, holy fucking shit. Like, how's this, this possible? This epidemic is worse than you think it is. I've seen it from an angle that nobody has 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 seen it from. How many people are watching this podcast right now? 224 people watching. I guarantee of the 224 people watching, at least 30, 35, 40 have paid money to webcam models and jerked. I, I know they have. Because this industry is fucking huge. It is massive. I would have individual girls online and sometimes up to 10,000 people watching them. There's a reason I bought a Bugatti. It is huge. And I'll tell you the problem. My customers are not creepy old men. My customers are young dudes. Young dudes, Mm -hmm. a lot of them well-spoken, good jobs, handsome enough to get laid. I just think if I could give him my brain, he'd have girls in his bed. But this is the problem. And this is why all the webcam customers are young. And this is why it's become an epidemic where everybody's doing it. Because when I was, you're you're the same age as me. When I was 16 or 17 and I liked a girl, I used to have to go and talk to her. Hi, my name's Tristan. Risk getting shot down. Risk someone telling you to get lost. Risk publish, public embarrassment. These youngsters, they grow up and they don't have to ever do that IRL. What they do is if they like a girl, they were 16, 17, what do they do? Drop her a Facebook message. They're 20, 21. They like a girl, what do they do? Message her on Instagram. Mm-hmm. They don't do any of this in IRL shit. So when I think I want to fuck a uh, 10 out of 10 blonde Eastern European chick, I'm like, okay, get in my car, put on a nice suit, go to Poland, go to nice restaurants, see if there's, oh, let see one at the bar, maybe approach her. So much has to be done to have sexual encounters with the, these level of this level of beautiful women that these guys just cop out. They have never done it. So they think, oh, I want to see a 10 out of 10 beautiful woman. Where am I going to find them? They're not messaging me on Facebook. They don't reply to me on Instagram. Oh, she'll get her tits out on this website. Oh, hi. I really like you. And then the girl will hit him with, oh, you know, it's so good to see a young, handsome guy on here. There's, none of my customers are young and handsome. They're all fucking young. <laughs> and then the simple will be like, okay, if I keep giving her money, maybe she'll meet me. And then people like me buy new Ferraris. It's beautiful. But uh, it's it's ugly, too. What a world we live in. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I had I don't know if I don't know if you saw this. Um I had this uh chick on for like my, my last podcast. She was she, is she weird. She she has like this uh she's a TikTok female dating coach and she has a 3 month no kissing rule. Really weird chick. But anyway, so I had her on for like a debate and uh in, is she a 10 in, or a 7? I would guess 7. She's like a 6, 6.5. <laughs> but uh so she was saying that um how she met her current husband and the story is like fucking crazy so apparently she was married she was working at the strip club and there was this guy that used to come in and uh book and he would come in every wednesday when she would work and basically sit down and pay for her lap dances just so he could talk to her for two and a half years and she's like and that's how i knew he was the one i'm like you're saying that this guy simp for you so bad that he for two and a half years like i'm like this is insane like i just could never imagine as a guy like going to a strip club for two and a half years every single wednesday just to talk to a girl but that's like i'll tell you shit. why his marriage is gonna fail yeah go ahead so you said every single wednesday yeah yeah thursday friday saturday he was in a different strip club or he was on a different webcam website paying other girls these guys men are in their nature not loyal men are disloyal in their nature and I don't even consider it disloyal. 
men want to have sex with lots of different women and men who can live like me do. I, I fuck loads of beautiful women. I'm literally famous for it. You can Google my name. It lists celebrities and shit who I fucked. But it's certainly celebrities in this country. But um, the guys who think, oh, I can get attention from this girl. All I have to do is go to a strip club and hand her some money, etc. You think that every Wednesday he was in that bitch's strip club and every Thursday he was at home and Friday he was at home. He was in different strip clubs, bro. He was in different strip clubs enjoying his version of variety of different beautiful women. The same way I enjoy my version of variety of different beautiful women, but I'm not a fucking punk. So she's like, okay, I'm married to this guy. Wait one year or two years or after she has a kid. He's going to be back in those motherfucking strip clubs. And bitch, if you're watching, you can just message me afterwards and say, you know what, Tristan, you were right. If I were you, leave him right now. You want to date the kind of guy who goes to strip clubs and simps after strippers? Leave him. Break up with him if you're watching this podcast. I'm telling you, I've seen customers at their worst. My customers are disgusting people. And your husband's one of them. 100%. Dump his ass. You know what I think? I, I, I agree with you in a sense. But you know what I think? I think for like a woman who wants like just like a super simpy husband, that might actually be like, I think he will like, once he gets like the girl, he's like, Oh my God, he's so excited that he was able to get the girl that he pursued for two and a half years that he might go online and jerk off to other webcam girls. But I don't yeah. think he has the balls to go out and like talk to other girls. Like I think cause he's such a simp that in a way he might even be a safer bet for the girl. Like in a way, like, right. You you know, see what We'll see. We'll see. Time will yeah, tell. We'll but um, I've seen these guys. Uh, maybe I've seen it from a different side because I'm behind the screens. I'm sitting here with like seven computer screens in front of me, uh, 30, 40 different models running, all the different guys online. I'll see a guy, you know, oh, Chloe, I love you so much. Here's some money. This is all I've got, Chloe. Oh, I can't wait to meet you. I'll WhatsApp you later. I love you so much. Uh, they'll pay $5 a minute to watch a fucking movie with this bitch. It's not always sexual. They'll watch a movie with one bitch. Go to sleep. Oh, I love you, Chloe. Okay, good night. Click. Two minutes later, at a different part of my screen, he logs into some other girl. Oh, hey, baby. Oh, I just logged in. I missed you so much. And they do this for fucking 10 hours a day with at least two or three different girls who work for me, let alone the girls who they call who don't work for me. So I've seen their ugly personalities from a different side of things. So yeah. that's why I would say her marriage is going to fail. But good luck to her. You know, she's a six. It's time to settle down anyway. So, you know, you're not going to get a man like me. So, you know, enjoy yeah. the sick. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty funny. So nowadays, how do you and uh, how do you mostly meet chicks? Like, uh, are you still doing mostly cold approach, or what are you? Uh, how are you meeting girls, new girls? I'm I'm a very, very, uh, I guess, I'm an active guy in my social life. I love to be at restaurants, bars, uh, nightclubs, uh, you know, like lounges, the shisha lounges, cigar lounges. So a lot of my uh, girls, a lot of the girls I meet, I guess I, I meet in real life. Uh, I'll approach it, you know waitresses even not necessarily girls that you see at the bars or clubs or restaurants but i'll go if i see a pretty girl i will go up and talk to her hands down uh, i meet a lot of girls the really high level girls who you don't see walking around through the world's best dating app and let me tell you what the world's best dating app is gentlemen the world's best dating app is fucking instagram I knew it's instagram if you're not a pussy ass bitch if you're a man who, and I know what you're going to say, some of you viewers, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, oh, but Tristan, you're six foot four and muscular and rich and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm six foot four. Fine. Thank you, God. That blessed me. But, you know, the muscles, the wealth, the intellect, the wit, that was all hard work. There was all hard work. And if you aren't about that, if you're not willing to put yourself through 10, 15 years of hard work and self-improvement to become the man, then fuck you. You're never going to get any girls and you're never going to get any attention. But you know what? When I tend to message a, a blue chick, 1 million plus follower girl, you know, a lot of them reply. Enough of them reply that every new city I go to, I can hang out with them. So Instagram is the world's best dating app, but you need to have the the social proof and the, you know, the lifestyle to, to make it attractive to people. If you're just some loser who's fat sitting in your mom's basement playing fucking Call of Duty on your PlayStation, all the Instagram pictures in the world of you playing fucking video games are not going to get you laid. So Instagram's a very good one. I do meet a lot of girls through Instagram as well, if I'm honest. Yeah, that makes sense. What strategy do you follow on Instagram? Uh, well, it's not, it depends. Uh, a lot of girls pop up in my suggestions. I get uh, girls approach me in uh, Romania, certainly. I'm, 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 I guess I'm kind of famous out here. Girls will, you know, they won't message me saying, hi, I want to meet up, but I'll get a follow from some smoking hot girl and she'll like three of my pictures in a row. You have to understand that that's, that's opening a door. That's an invitation yeah. to message her. She, she's hoping that I follow her back and send her a message. That happens to me at least once a day. Um, but if I'm looking at, uh, if I'm in London and I want to find a really, you know, hot, beautiful girl to maybe spend a weekend with, 
I'll I know all the hotspots in London. I'll type in a restaurant, Amazonico, or a really cool restaurant in London. I'll look at the top photos of whoever's tagged there. It's always some fucking hot influencer with a hundred thousand plus followers. I'll, I'll slide into her DMs. It doesn't even have to be anything too complicated. And if she replies, she replies. Or I can even like three of her photos and follow her and wait to see if she does it back. But again, you know, to make an Instagram as a woman is easy. All you have to do is is be hot. Why is my Instagram big? Because I've worked my whole life to become a multimillionaire and I buy fucking Ferraris and Lambos and, you know, I post all the cool pictures that everyone as a man wants. So my Instagram is big. I've got the blue verified check from all my years of kickboxing. So, you know, girl, girls, it's not about whether a girl, here's what people don't understand. It's not about, oh, he has followers and a blue check, so I'll message him. And he doesn't, so I won't message him. Girls will only message you if they fancy you. And they'll only message you if you're their type. But girls, if you've ever had a woman's Instagram on your phone, which I have, girlfriends or webcam models, they get flooded with messages. Yeah. Uh, hundreds a day sometimes, Thousands. especially if you're one of these big models. But they will scroll through their other inbox all day and they'll miss your message. But when they see large following in a blue tick, they'll think, oh, who's he? So all it does is get your message open. Yeah. That's all it does. Girls don't fuck you because you have a blue check mark and they don't fuck you because you have followers, but they will read what you write to them if you have that. Yeah. So that is a, it's a life hack. But again, I wasn't born with this kind of social proof. And if, if, if you don't have it, if you're watching at home thinking, oh, well, you've got a big Instagram. Cool. Work hard for five, six years. Buy yourself a Bugatti and tag yourself in it and have Bugatti tag you in the car that you purchased. Believe me, the followers will come, but that ain't easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point. The, the blue check mark is it allows you to get your foot in the door because chicks do get flooded with so many messages. Yeah. But when they see, and I've talked to so many girls on the podcast about that, like time and time again, they say, they all say the same thing. Like, I'll be like, how important is a blue check mark? And they, they go like this. It's pretty important. Like, I usually skip messages from like the average guy, but then when I see a blue check mark, I read the message. And yeah, you're right. They don't fuck you because of the blue check mark, but they yeah. open your message because of blue check mark. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's good. It, it, it's exactly the same as having a Lamborghini because if you've never had a Lamborghini or if you're a simp or if you look down on Playboys, etc., you'll say women fuck you if you have a Lamborghini. Wrong. Prostitutes and escorts will, uh, will go for you if you have a Lamborghini because they think they're getting paid. If you don't pay for women, which is a rule that I have, oh. a Lamborghini does nothing for you but get you gets your foot in the door. I'll pull up at the restaurant. There'll be a few hot girls outside. I'm in my Lamborghini. I'll walk out. Hey, what's your name? Is that your car? Now, if I'm a nerd and I start saying, oh, uh, yeah, that's my car. It has a 5.2 liter engine and it uh, generates 600 horsepower. And I I've lost them already. I've already lost them. Uh -huh. But, you know, if you make a, a stupid joke, anything, if you say, uh, yeah, it's mine now. But, you know, if you marry me and divorce me, you'll get half of it. You can make any stupid joke you like. Make them laugh. It doesn't matter what it is. It, it, it gives you an opener. But if you're a boring loser, the blue check mark, the Lamborghini, they're going to do nothing for you. They're only going to attract uh, escorts and girls who want to get paid for their physical time with you which is not a game that i play so you know it, do, it doesn't help you all that much you have to oh, have i think, I think it's a really good game. point I, I agree with you yeah i mean i definitely agree with that point that like it's like it's a foot in the door but it's not like like because there's a lot of really rich dudes who are fucking sips like they don't get laid at all so i know exactly. i personally know them i banged some of their wives like i've yeah. literally had situations where i'm banging the wife of like a multimillionaire, and i'm like why like why are you not with your husband and then she explains like about him like oh, okay yeah he's a loser so yeah. Uh, yeah just having money alone is not enough to like you know consistently get you laid like of no course. unless but you're it, paying yeah which unless is, you're paying which doesn't which, count yeah which is kind of sad in my opinion like I've, I've also never enjoyed like I've, i paid for sex twice in my whole life when i was younger and i didn't really enjoy the experience it's just like to me it's not satisfying like i don't know it's not to, i mean in my opinion it's it's not even sex it's not yeah. sex. I said the, the richest shake in the world can pay the most expensive escort in the world, the all the money in the world for sex and not get the same level of sex that a fat guy will get from his wife who's a four. Yeah. That that's genuine right. love, that genuine, uh, you know, I want to go to bed with this person. And and for anyone who dares say something so stupid in the comments, like, well, you pay one way or another, wrong. You do not pay one way or another. Because if you having fun with your life, buying champagne, going to dinner, whatever it is you're doing. If her financial situation doesn't change by interacting with you, then when she comes to bed with you, she's doing it through uh, lust. She lusts for you. She wants you. She wants to have sex with you. If you are not changing her financial situation, no girl eats your dinner, drinks champagne and thinks, oh, well, he paid $300. I better fuck him. 
That yep. never, ever happens. No. Uh, if you believe that, you know, paying for dinner, et cetera, is the same as paying for sex, then I've got a counter argument. That means everything you buy is paying for sex. So let's say a girl comes around my house, around my house. She comes to my house on her own and she drinks a Pepsi that costs me 99 cents. If I fuck her after drinking that Pepsi, did I pay 99 cents for sex? No, it's stupid. But when you live a good lifestyle, people say, well, you pay one way or another. And you know what? Yeah, it would be cheaper to hire escorts than to spend a lot of the money that I spend living my life that attracts women. But I'm not doing it to attract women. I'm living my life and spending my money and flying on private jets and riding around on jet skis and drinking champagne because I like it. I like it. And if it gets women, if it, you know, if, it, if, it, if the lifestyle attracts women too, then good. But I do that anyway. So, yeah, no, you're not paying one way or another. That's completely, completely wrong. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. I think it's a dumb argument. Like, guys sometimes will be like, oh, I don't want to get her an Uber because it's like paying for sex. Like, I'll, I'll if a girl needs an Uber, I'll get her an Uber or I'll pay for her parking. Like, that doesn't, that's not the same thing as paying her for sex. Like, paying for a girl's no. parking is just like, I think, just being like a, I don't know, just, I just think it's like, I, I hate saying being a gentleman, but like some chicks actually want that. And you I can agree. save $10 on her parking, but then you don't get laid. Like, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll do, I, I mean, and I'll go, I'll, I'll open up on the podcast and I'll say as, as a multimillionaire, I have girls who hit me up from all over the world. And if I'm in Bucharest, Romania, and the girl is in, I have, say, let's say I have a girl in France, a girl in Italy, and a girl in Morocco. And uh, I want to fuck all three of them. I'm happy to book plane tickets. Plane ticket is like two, three, four hundred dollars. I'm worth mm -hmm. millions. I don't give a fuck. It's the same as when I was broke. I used to pay a girl's taxi to my house. I'll fly the French girl in to my house. I'm not paying for her to have a vacation. She yeah. hangs out with me, has some fun. We go up our flyer back. The girl from Italy comes over the same day. Their flight, their her flight lands in the evening. I can hang out with her, have some dinners with her, fuck her. And the girl from Morocco flies in the day the Italian girl leaves. People will be like, "Oh, you're paying for these girls' plane tickets." I'm paying to. I'm. If I wanted to fuck all them by traveling around the world to go and have sex, sorry, I'm fucking busy. This is where my office is. This is where my, you know, where my, where my work is. I need to stay in Bucharest because I like staying in Bucharest. I don't want to fucking travel to Morocco to have sex with some chick, but I'll happily put her on a plane and fly her to me. Exactly the same as when I was young. If a girl was from a different town, from Luton, if she was from a town like Hitchin that was quite close by, I'd pay for her taxi to come and see me. Yeah. She, her financial situation still changes zero by hanging out with me. So when she comes to bed with me, it's genuine lust and it's genuine desire. I'm just facilitating it. And if you disagree, then maybe you're not on my level yet. I don't know. But what I don't do is pay for vacations. That's very different. I will not want to fuck a girl and say, let's meet in the Maldives. Let me fly you there. No, that is paying. And that is simpy. I'm buying her a luxurious vacation. Bringing her to my house is bringing her to my fucking house. You know what that's about. It doesn't matter if it's a taxi or a plane or a fucking bus. I don't mind getting the ticket. Yeah. Dude, it's so funny. We have pretty much the same exact view on this topic because like, I'll also do the same. Like girls will be like, oh, can you get me an Uber? And I'll be like, yeah, sure. I'll get you an Uber to my house. But if she's like, oh, can you get me an Uber to like a restaurant? You know, then I'll be like, no, like, you know, so it's like, it's like yeah. the same exact thing. See, uh, check this, the comment, comment section, genuine loss after flying her out some anon who doesn't get it. Well, let me explain to you. Yes. Because if I was living in Dubai or if I was living in the Maldives, or I was living in Thailand, a lot of women would think, oh, I really want to go to that place. So I will suffer having like meeting Tristan to go to that exotic place. What girl do you know that wants to come to Romania? Do you know any? <laughs> Have you ever met one? So no, Mirza, said Jack. I don't know who the fuck you are, but no, women don't want to come to Romania. Romania is the kind of place that men want to hang out in. No woman wants to come here. Women want to meet me. So they'll come and meet me because this is where I live. Yeah, they don't I, want to I've been to Romania once. <laughs> to a cold Eastern European city. It's fucking minus five outside. How many women are flying her out? Yeah, yeah, they're really tricking me because every woman wants to be in a cold Eastern European city. You know, yeah, they just, yeah. you know, they're happy to get fucked by me to uh to hang out here. Yeah, what Romania, Romania, Romania is like too cold in the winter and too hot. Yeah, what, what a dumb comment. Sam, but again, that's a guy who never gets it. That's a guy who doesn't get it. And that's a guy that wouldn't pay for a girl to take a taxi to his house. Yeah, they think, yeah. oh, well, if I pay for a taxi, maybe she just wants to hang out in my house. Let, let me ask you this question. You guys, since we're kind of talking about travel. Yeah. So you, you guys have traveled all across the world, pretty much. All across uh, the world. Where would you, what, are, like, what made you pick Romania as like your, uh, whatever, like your center? Uh, many reasons. And I don't like to talk politics because I'm not, not a political guy. Hmm. Look at what's happening in Canada yeah, right now. Yeah. Now, most of the Western world is like that. 
And I wanted somewhere uh, somewhere free from that kind of bullshit. I like Romania very much. It's a very hostile environment. It's not a touristy place. But if you build a life for yourself here, you're free to live your fucking life. Unlike Canada or the UK or a lot of places in the United States. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess that is one of my main motivations. And people will say stupid things to me like, oh, you go out there because, uh, you know, the women are easy to sleep with. Wrong. Women in, uh, no offense, the United States, Miami, London, Germany, Paris, they're easy to sleep with. Girls in Romania are not easy to sleep with at all. But this is like playing it on hard mode. They are beautiful, but uh, much, much harder to sleep with than a typical girl in London. I just like it out here. It has nothing to do with women. But, you know, I've elevated myself to a point of, you know, being famous in this country. I've worked very hard. I do very well for myself and I do attract a lot of women. Uh, still, it's still playing on hard mode, but I've, uh, that's why I call, that's why I say I live in God mode because I feel like I've unlocked the cheat codes through all my years of hard work. Mm -hmm. But, uh, why not like Colombia or Brazil then? Because those, those places are pretty, like, also kind of fit what you're saying. Um, I, I feel like, hmm, Colombia. So I have to go to Colombia for a war room summit. And I was fucking around on a dating app because I'm going to be in Colombia soon and messaging a few people on Instagram. I feel like Colombia is easy mode. And uh, I don't I don't discredit guys who hang out in South America because I understand it can be fun. But I think if I try to get laid in Colombia, it's going to be so fucking easy. It is. Yeah. Uh, I think that there's, there's still this level of um, Eastern Europe 35, 40 years ago was like this. You could come to Romania. Oh, I'm American with a good American job and an American passport. And girls would, would probably jump into bed with you and suck your dick. I know old, old American dudes who used to hang out here. I get it. Um, but Romania has changed so much. Watch my brother's last Instagram story. Cobra Tate, his last Instagram story is a restaurant that we're trying to get into. There's like 20 supercars. They're all owned by Romanians. Coming here as an American and being like, oh, I have an American passport and American salary. They'll be like, so you're broke. They know Romanian boys with Lamborghinis and they know Romanian boys live in the high life. They're not interested in your American dollar. Whereas I feel like South America is still skewed that way. Uh, quite a lot. I know there are some big players in most America, uh, Latin American cities, but for me, it's just, um, uh, I don't know. I just feel it's too easy. I feel like it's shooting fish in a barrel, you know? I'm That's a white face dude. I'm six foot four. I'm a millionaire. Like, what Colombian isn't going to sleep with me? And I feel like it's 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 cheating in a way. And uh, well, luckily, yeah. go on. No, I was going to say, that's interesting. That's a demotivator for you because for me, that would be a motivator. Like for me, it's like, yeah, of course, Colombia is easy. So I want to go there, right? Like it's funny that for you, that's like the opposite effect. That's like, ooh, it's, it's going to be too easy. For me, that's like. Yeah, like, like yeah. I mean, you put me anywhere in the world. I like places like London. I like places like Moscow. Uh, you know, I, I, I like Bucharest very much. I like Warsaw, Poland. Um, put me in Prague, Czech Republic. These are places where, you know, especially Prague, Czech Republic, Budapest, a lot of tourists come into and lots of foreigners try to sleep with the local girls and the local girl, girls typically aren't interested. I like it on hard mode. I mean, I like girls who are really beautiful. I like girls with low body counts. I like girls who are virgins. I like that. That's what okay. I'll go for. Okay. You know, just to go and fuck a bunch of chicks because I can. I mean, I could right here in Bucharest if I wanted to. But, uh, you know, if I meet a girl who's a virgin, who's 19 years old and she's sweet and innocent and beautiful, I'm happy to date her for a couple of weeks. However long it takes to take a virginity and end up sleeping with her. For me, that's much more fun than just banging two chicks a day or three chicks a day. Gotcha. OK. Yeah. yeah my, my kind of observation, I've been to Romania. I've traveled across Eastern Europe. Uh, I thought Poland was like really fucking easy. Uh, not cold, appro like cold approaching at bars and stuff can be difficult because girls in Poland can be super bitchy. Yeah. To outsiders. Uh, the fact that I spoke Russian was definitely like a big plus because if a girl yes. spoke Russian, I could get it pretty easily. But uh, Romania, I only banged one girl during the six days I was in Romania. So I thought Romania oh, was, was kind of mm -hmm. difficult. Yeah, I didn't really get that many Tinder matches. And a yeah. lot of the chicks I met from Cold Approach were like, they were like, it was weird because I noticed in like when I would approach girls on the street in Romania, like they were into it. Like I could tell like they were into the conversation. But then over text, they would have all these weird excuses. They would be like, they'd be like, oh, I don't know. I, uh, I, I can't do this or something like I'm, that. They'd I'm like, very happy you said that because, yeah. again, that, that backs up exactly what I'm saying. It backs up exactly what I'm saying about Romania being hard mode. And, and to, put it very, to put it very bluntly, if a Romanian girl wants to be a hoe, and plenty of them do, they don't stay in Romania. They go to Dubai. They work as escorts. They go to Germany. They go to England. That's what Romanian girls who want to be hoes do. Romania is the most Christian country in the world. Uh, 98 oh, people identify as or the, the Vatican City is number one, Romania is number two. The Vatican doesn't count, but it's the most Christian country on earth. 
Uh, in Romania, one of my exes I met when she was 26. She was a virgin at 26 years old. I don't know if a 26 year old virgin exists in Miami besides, you know, the dudes who are in sales to jerk off the <laughs> webcam. But, uh, and I like Miami. Miami's a lot of fun. And then the, you know, but, um, yeah, Romania is, is very, very difficult because the women here are very traditionally minded. So they'll meet you, you flirt with them. They like you, they'll smile. They think, Oh, great. Then they'll get home and think, ah, oh, if I, if I meet this foreigner, will he really ever want to marry me? Or does he want something serious? Maybe not. So maybe I won't. That's their mindset. And I, I know it very well. I kill it out here, but it's taken me, you know, a while to learn the game. If you try and use a traditional, you know, the kind of game you use in London here in Romania, it's not going to work. And I've had some very handsome and very well-to-do, very smart friends come and hang out with, uh, with me in Romania. And they tend to get laid because I bring girls who bring their friends who sleep with my friends. But, you know, when, in terms of like dating apps and stuff, they have no luck at all. It's very hard out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, dating apps are tricky. I remember that. This leads me kind of to my next question. <clears throat> So uh, how do you get like those uh, traditionally minded girls on board with your lifestyle, right? Because you would think that like those girls are the ones who are going to be the hardest to kind of get on board with this, right? Because they're, it's like so outside of what they think, you know, a guy's life should be like, they're expecting like, you know, like a guy who's going to marry them and shit. And then they get this like international playboy who has a webcam model, who's banging a bunch of chicks. So how do you kind of get them on board with what you're doing? That is a very difficult question. Um, and there are, you know, with some opponents, you have to box. With some, you have to kick. With some, you have to wrestle. And it depends on, on which girl. Because the truth is, some girls will never get on board with that. Some girls will find out the kind of lifestyle you live and be like, you know, it's it's me or the lifestyle. And, uh, you know, goodbye. Nice to meet you. But um, there's a, a lot of girls who it, it, it takes. How can I explain this? There are lots of different ways to do it. But ideally, you have to make sure that they understand the caliber of man that they're with you know women a lot of women they want all women want to drive a lamborghini in terms of a man that's what they want but they want it to be as reliable as a toyota so if you buy a lamborghini you have to accept that there are lamborghini problems it breaks down all the time the roof stops working the fucking engine coolant starts leaking that's the problems that you get with with driving a top tier car and if as long as women as long as you establish yourself as the fucking man it becomes very easy. In Romania, they actually have a saying. Women would rather would rather share the king than marry the jester. That's how you translate it into English. And it's more of a Eastern European Russian thing, but a traditionally minded woman will think, okay, I'm going to marry this man. I really love this man. I'm going to close my eyes to what he does. So when you get them, I think the good girls are actually the easier ones to deal with. If I meet some hoe from London, she'll be like, okay, you're my boyfriend now. Don't cheat. Don't text anyone. I'm like, who the fuck are you? you got a body count of like fucking 50. Don't tell me what to do. But it's, it's the traditionally minded one who um, I think are, I think they're easier. I don't know. If you make them really fall in love, real love is the answer. If they really fall in love with you, they're willing to turn their, turn their eyes the other way. And some of them are lucky because you love them back. And some of them are madly in love with you and you don't give a fuck about them. But you use that power to continue living the way you want to live. Oh. And uh, sounds cruel, but it's a cruel world. So sue me. Do you do like, uh, let me ask you this question. Do you do like love bombing or that's like off limits? Um, I don't know what that is. Love bombing is like, um, like, like, let's say like you're talking to a girl and you'd be like, oh, you know, I really, you know, I'm starting to fall for you. Uh, you know, I really see us having a future together. It's kind of a lot what the Tinder swindler guy did. That's like kind yeah. of. His, that was his strategy. He would love bomb the shit out of chicks. And they would be like, oh, my God, this guy is, like, falling for me. Like, this perfect guy is going to be mine. And yeah. then they just, like, they just, like, give up their, you know, whatever. Uh... You know what? This is going to sound a bit fucked up, and I don't I don't care. Um, when I tell a girl I love her, I mean it. Uh -huh. And I've fallen in love. And I've been in love with three or four different women at the same time. I just refuse to live the typical lifestyle that is prescribed for men. You know, make some money or get a good job, find one woman, settle down, have some kids. That's your one woman forever. I refuse. I get 70 years on this planet if I'm lucky and I'm going to enjoy all the fruits of my fucking labors. So if I meet a girl and I, you know, I really start falling for her, I'll be honest with her. A girl will sometimes say, I love you, Tristan. I'll be like, you know what? She goes, I love you so much. How can I keep you on some advice? And if I don't give a fuck about it, I'll say, listen, my, my advice to you is to leave me alone. Leave me alone and delete my number. And that just makes you want them more. That just makes them want you more and you keep her. But if I ever told a girl I love her or tell a girl I have feelings for her, that I want a family with her or whatever, I'm, I'm telling the truth. But the moment she leaves my house, I'm, I'm back into God mode. I'm back into, okay, fuck it. Let's enjoy myself. Let's let's call another girl over. 
because I'm okay. not going to sit in front of my computer and jerk off. You know, I'm not, I'm not playing that game. Yeah, so so that's that's not love bombing. So you, you're 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 actually being genuine. So love bombing. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a very genuine person. Yeah, yeah. Love bombing would be if you're using everybody. like love as a form of a tactic, right? Where you don't really love the girl, but you're saying you do as a way to manipulate her, right? So it doesn't sound like you're actually doing that. Yeah, uh, which I don't either. Actually, I personally avoid that as well because I just find yeah. it kind of fucked up. But I do like, love them. No, I do love. Right. Love's beautiful, and it's a real. And you know what? Lo the love between a man and a woman, it's a beautiful thing, and it will enrich your life. I'm not about, well, how many, can I just fuck this girl and fuck this girl and fuck this girl? When I said I'd rather spend a few months with a virgin, and obviously I'm fucking other girls at the same time, so I'm not yeah. going celibate. But when I say I'd rather spend a few months with a virgin, that, that's sex you get with a girl who, you you know, she's new to sex, she's new to men, and she really is so in love with you. I'll fall in love with her right back. I'll still fuck other girls, but I'll fall in love with her right back. And there's nothing empty about my, uh, my transactions. It's not so much about just trying to get my dick wet, because I feel that's an empty way to live. I feel like if you're just trying to get your dick wet, you're missing out on one of the most beautiful experiences of the male female relationship. Yeah, I love, you know, when, when I'm sick, uh, so I've just had, uh, I've just had a, a medical procedure on my shoulder and a, trying, you know, trying to fix an old kickboxing injury and I'm laying in bed and, you know, girls will come and massage my shoulder and bring me my coffee and bring me my soup and, but you know, some girl who you just fucked once isn't going to do that for you. Yeah. I've had, I've had, you know, I mean, um, this is going to get me in trouble. But, you know, every two or three days, I just change women. And these women love, you know, taking care of me and my, rubbing my back and shit. And that's that's the beautiful part of the male-female sexual relationship and the male-female sexual interaction that so many of these, you know, pickup artists completely miss out on. And I don't consider myself a pickup artist. I consider myself a playboy. I mean, I'll drive to a city in Italy. I'll find a beautiful girl. This is, this, this is a story from last year. I met this beautiful girl. On the first day, I had a bunch of other Tinder matches, a bunch of girls who I've been messaging on Instagram, and I thought, this girl's nice. I'm going to spend five days with her. I spent five whole days with the exact same woman. Now, I could have got my lay count up by another four girls. I didn't. I didn't want to. And uh, when I was giving John Anthony advice on his podcast, I said, bro, you have to find more meaning in it. The meaning is what makes it cool. I left Italy, and this girl would write a handwritten love letter to me every single day, take a picture of it, and send it to me for six months until she finally realized I wasn't coming back. But that feeling every time I got her love letter made my fucking day. So Marika, if you're watching, I miss you a little bit. But uh, <laughs> I miss you. sorry, baby. Uh, yeah, no, you know what? One thing I was thinking about uh, quite a bit recently, ever since I did my uh, Tinder Swindler win video, I kind of did a breakdown of like the Tinder Swindler guy. Is like you know how game like game can be used for like nefarious purposes as well. Like there's like the there's like the fun side of game, which is kind of what we've been talking about. But there's also yeah. like the the dark triad of game. Like the guy, like the Tinder Swindler guy, he was using game as yeah. a way to get money from girls, like stealing yeah. money, right? Which is you know like pretty you know, obviously pretty fucked up. So yeah. like it's, it's just funny how like game can be used like game is like a, a sword but you can use a sword to like kill bad people or you can use it to kill like you know the villagers right yes so, you're right it's just interesting have you ever thought about that like how like and like how do you let me ask you this question like how do you uh like do you, is there like do you ever like sit down and think you know what like i'm this is like off limits i'm gonna have this rule for myself this thing i'm gonna do this thing i'm not gonna do like you know do you ever think about shit like that um no but i just i just make sure that i leave doors open if a girl wants to leave me I'm the last person who's going to argue uh -huh. with the woman. If a girl says, you know, Tristan, you have too many women. Uh, you're, you're not what I want. It's just going to make me unhappy. It's going to break my heart. Uh, you know, I'm leaving you. I tell her, okay, you know, I'm going to miss you. Goodbye. Uh -huh. And as long as I leave doors open, then I can't feel bad about anything I do. You know, I've had, uh, I actually had my mother lecture me. My mother was lecturing me about uh, some of the women I have children with. And said, um, she was like, oh, well, Tristan, you know, you could have just had one woman and settled down, had a family and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, mom, they could have left at any time. They knew I had all these various webcam models. They knew I was surrounded by women. They knew I was with a different woman every single day. And they stayed and got pregnant and gave birth to a child. And they're, they're very happy women, but they could have left. The door's open. So I don't feel like I tricked anyone because, as I said, I'm a very genuine person. Yeah. I don't lie. I don't steal. I don't, I don't cheat. Uh, I don't cheat people as in like take their money, etc. I mean, if you think sleeping with other women is cheating, then yeah, fuck, I cheat. But um, yeah, if you leave the door open, there's no reason to feel guilty. It's only when you trick people into staying in a situation under false pretenses. Yeah, that's when you have to feel bad. But I don't play that. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. I have the same exact rule for myself. I don't uh, lie, or ch I think cheating is only cheating if you you know promise the girl exclusivity, right? Then it's yeah. cheating. But if you don't promise her exclusivity, then it's not cheating, right? Yeah promise anything cheating uh, is breaking the terms of the contract yeah, yeah my contract is you're mine but 
I'm sometimes busy. That's it. So, uh, you know. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. It's kind of off topic, but I was curious. Is there any, like, fundamental differences in uh, philosophy or, like, you know, lifestyle that you and your brother have? Like, is there anything that you guys, like, differ on? Or do you guys pretty much agree on everything? No, we. I mean, we agree on everything. Our interests and the way we live is ever so slightly different, of course. But we agree on it. There's nothing we disagree on. Uh -huh. Nothing that I can think of, literally. Literally nothing. So, easy answer. Okay. You guys got lucky that you guys were almost like born like you like a, like a fucking comedic duo. Like you know. See, that, that like, was luck. That was yeah. luck. When people say I'm lucky, and they talk about my money or my kickboxing or whatever or my physique or whatever, I'm like, no, that wasn't luck. But being born with a brother, uh, so close in age, that was that was luck. That was like that imagine was if like your brother was like a priest or something like that or like uh yeah you know like something completely different and then like yeah I don't know we 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 grew up together and we always had each other's backs so we always we were always going to be similar in personality and similar in interest so yeah and no, that's a blessing to have a guy like him on your team um, is it just, even if he wasn't my brother if you have someone like someone like Andrew Tate on your team I mean what a guy to have on your team and and me as well that's why my nickname is the Talisman it means good luck charm you're walking down the street with me you get in a fight. Good to have. You need a wingman. I'm good to have. I'm a good guy to have around. So you know we're like that for each other. So it's it's a, it's a real blessing. Is it just you two? Is there more siblings? Is there more teams? No, I have a sister who doesn't talk to me. Lives in America. You know, full left wing BLM crazy. Oh, yeah. You know, okay. thinks that I exploit women because of my business. Even though I have women who work for me who make more than she does. Even though she's a lawyer, it's just you know she's just a hater. So I don't really. I, I have nothing bad to say about my sister. She just doesn't talk to me. We just don't talk. I haven't spoken properly in years. And uh, you know. I, Wish her all the best. I don't know, but she lives in fucking Kentucky somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> That's such a random place, Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, I know. Weird, but yeah. So I do have a sister also, but she's not part okay. of this equation. Okay, interesting. Uh, okay, let me let me take because we had a few questions from the audience. So let me take some of the best ones. Sure. Uh, that I wrote out ahead of time. So okay, cool. so let's start off with this one. If you were a twenty-year-old broke college student kid, uh, which specifically would you do to get to a similar level that you're at right now in the shortest time span? Well, I wasn't a broke 20-year-old college kid because I could not afford to go to college. So you're richer than me, my friend. I was poorer than you at 20. Um, when I was 19, almost 20, I was still working at a fast food restaurant. So what would I do? You know, it's going to sound like a boring answer. But if you ask 100 millionaires how they made money, you're going to get 100 different answers. Elon Musk is going to say, well, I invented PayPal as a processing system. Right. Uh, Jeff Bezos is going to say, I started uh, selling books on the internet. And Tristan Tate is going to say, I got a bunch of beautiful women. I put them online and made their made them get their tits out for losers and took their money. So what would I do? I was If I lost it all today, if I went flat broke today, which is never going to happen, I would start a webcam studio. I know I can take a beautiful woman and I can sit her down and type on a computer and I can make $20,000 a month with a single beautiful girl. So I would start a webcam studio if I was 20. If you're like, I don't know how to start a webcam studio. Uh, I teach people this inside of the war room. That's my brother's organization. It's not even mine, but I'll plug it right here. In the war room, I teach people everything I know. How to run a webcam studio. I have two young guys. They live out in Dubai now. They're 18, 19 years old. They're making $100,000 a month managing OnlyFans models. And before me, they were just students. They dropped out of university as soon as they learned what I had to teach. So I've got hacks to the matrix. So I would just do what I know best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of like I think – the general answer is uh, that I would give is just like whatever skills you have, like whatever your gifts are in life, focus on that. Like, for example, exactly. your, your gift is that you're quite good at, with women, right? So you use that quite gift. Good. You're, <laughs> you're good with women. You're really good with women. Uh, so, uh, so, you know, like, but like, I guess I could technically, I don't think I could really do what you guys do. Not that I'm bad with women, but I, like, I think that my more thing is that I'm good at explaining concepts and articulating things. And so that's why I do what I do, right? So I think I could potentially do your business, but I don't think I would be nearly as good at it as you guys are. Um, so, and, and, I think and you can't sleep either. So me and Andrew used to sleep in shifts. We, you have to run 24 hours a day around the clock to be a successful webcam guy. So, yeah. Um, oh, that would be one one man alone, it's a, it's a, it's a tricky task. Yeah. Uh, but I think that like for other people, like for, I don't think, for example, let's take Jeff Bezos, right? Je there's no way Jeff Bezos, he's a dork, right? Like he's a really smart guy, but he's a dork. Yeah. There's no he way he can ever do idea. what you guys do, like not in yeah. a million years, right? But he was quite good at, you know, the selling the books stuff, right? Exactly. But I'll, I'll never be as rich as him. I mean, I wouldn't want to be him. I think if yeah, we could like trade that. lives, he'd say yes. And I'd say no, yeah. but um, I wouldn't want to be him. But I also, but he probably maybe doesn't want to be me. So good for him. I'm glad, I'm glad he's rich. I'm glad he's happy. I'll never be that rich, but I don't want to be.
I don't want to be. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm almost rich enough. Almost. Yeah. But so I think that like the answer is, is to that question is like you have to like kind of know yourself and yeah, know what you're good at. at. And I think some people aren't even meant to be entrepreneurs. I think a lot of people like glorify the entrepreneur lifestyle and it's great. But I think some people aren't capable of being entrepreneurs um, because they don't have the discipline or the uh, self-motivation. Like some I people agree. need to work for someone else because they cannot like they, they can't hold themselves accountable. Exactly. Um, and, and some people are just good at different things. I mean, the guy who just the guy who just fixed my shoulder. He's a fucking surgeon. I mean, I get girls on the internet and I make them get their tits out. This dude cuts people open and rebuilds shoulders. I mean, that's fucking impressive. That's amazing. Now, I don't know how much he obviously makes a lot of money. He's one of the best surgeons in the world. But I don't give a fuck how much of a webcam studio you run. The surgeon impresses me more. You know what I mean? So people are good at different things, man. Play to your strengths. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the answer. All right, let me ask this question. So uh, this was a common question that people had. How do you promote the OnlyFans girls? And what kind of marketing do you do specifically? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to tell you because I teach people how to do this inside of the war room. I teach people to do this inside of the war room. And it, there, it, there is a formula to it, but it's a formula that I have perfected over a 12-year career. And I am a professional in my industry. I'm world-renowned in my industry. And I'm not going to give all my secrets away on a public podcast. So okay. I don't, I'm not going to tell you. Get inside the war room. I'll, I'll let you know. But Fair until enough. then, you know, my secrets, I'm not just going to broadcast them here. Yeah, and I also, my customers will know what I do. And my customers will be wise to my act and they'll spot something. Like, oh, this must be one of Tristan's girls. So no, I'm not telling any, anybody, not, not publicly, but with that, that's fair enough. No, no one's going to give away their business secrets for free. Yeah, uh, no, no, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't blame you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that was actually just one of the questions someone wrote. Okay. No so yeah, of course we got this question. How do you retain girls and give, okay. So we kind of, add, I asked the second part of this question already naturally came up in the conversation, but I guess mm -hmm. like, what is your general strategy for retaining girls in general? Like keeping girls around and like, you know, keeping them from like, you know, I guess just like moving on to a different part of their life or whatever. Um, what, what, what are their options? I mean, what are their options? If you have a girlfriend and you're worried, Oh, I need to somehow keep her and retain her because she's going to leave me for someone else. That's that's more of a you problem than a than a me problem. Uh, I, as I said, with with a, you know, if I have a girlfriend, she'll genuinely fall in love with me, and she's fallen in love with a, a multimillionaire, six foot four kickboxing champion with a cool, fun lifestyle, a nice, big, comfortable house. I'm not worried she's gonna get you know day gamed when she goes to Starbucks and some guy's gonna fucking pick her up. I, I don't worry about that, so mm -hmm. I don't feel I have to necessarily try to retain women. The secret is work on yourself. Uh -huh. Don't try and manipulate a woman into staying with you and don't try to control a woman too much. If you work on yourself enough and you perfect, uh, cause I'm always a work in progress. You know, I'm, I'm in the, some of the, one of the worst shape I've been in in a long time because of my, the surgery I just had, etc. I'm always working on myself and that's how I retain women. And that's how I retain, you know, maintain the respect of women. And, um, yeah, work, work on yourself, I guess would be the key. And then you won't have to worry so much about how to retain women. The one thing I would add to that is fuck them really well. Like if you fuck them yeah. really well, like that's going to significantly increase the, that's like but, but, my strategy. But that, that's part of dating the, the alpha male, you know, the cool rich guy, big house. I didn't want to say, you know, who fucks them really well, but it's, it's part of the package. You know, yeah. You're, you have to be that ideal guy for them. And sex is a massive part of it. But you know, what's interesting. Like a lot of uh, girls talk about how like celebrities and shit that they fuck are like really bad in bed, right? Cause they don't give a shit. So if you're like the cool high value guy who also fucks them well, you're the exception to the rule, I think. Exactly. And that's why, and that's why you'll find, uh, if you are that guy, you'll find girls who get new boyfriends and, you know, girls who you break up with who will move on. I could call my exes, most of them at any time and have them in my bed within two hours, boyfriend or no boyfriend, you know, mm. because you, you set a standard in, in every single way. And sex is a massive way of doing that. Yeah. You're right. It's interesting that you say that. I'm also on like really good terms with all my exes. I've never had like a bad breakup in my whole life. Like all the all the girls who I've ever dated, seriously. Like I I don't think I don't think I can call them and fuck all of them because some of them are like married and shit. Mm. But uh, I think I can call them and like have a good conversation with them. Like like none of them hate me. None of them yeah. dislike me. None of them are pissed at me. Like I'm on good terms with all of them. Yeah, a few hate me. You're you, you. <laughs> you know, I, I collect, I collect exes, you know, I get a new, no, I get two new exes a week, but I'll, yeah, plenty of them hate me, but whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me ask this question. So someone, uh, people kept asking this, would you ever do a paid service showing, uh, ex more explicit parts of Tate confidential? Mm, not really because of what it is. So I'm going to, I'm going to plug something real quickly. If you're familiar with 
the players year. I've now released it publicly. I mentioned this on the John Anthony podcast. I've now released it publicly. I'm posting a link right now in the in the chat. That is a diary I ran for four months. I was going to run it for the whole year, but you'll see in my my posts later why why it fucked up. Essentially, I was giving a completely open book look into my sexual and dating life. So the year was 2020. Every time I met a girl and uh, dated her, I'd, I'd write a review on how the date went. It was a Twitter page that was a diary. And every time I went to bed with her, this is something I did that no one else has ever done. No game guy, no pickup guy, no red pill guy has ever done. I would take a picture of her in my bedroom, underwear, lingerie, covered up. I would censor the picture, but I would make sure my watch was in the picture. It was This is a different watch, but I was wearing a Breitling Super Ocean at the time. And I'd take a picture of her. And what I would do is I didn't take a hot picture of her Instagram, a picture of her in my bedroom, and I'd write a review, review how I seduced her, how it went how I know the girl, et cetera, et cetera. So I was running this for ages. So this would be, I guess, what you're asking, the explicit side of my real life behind the Take Confidential, where I don't really show the women I'm with, et cetera. Yeah. Um, no, I won't do it again. I won't do it again because you motherfucking simps out there can't help. You can't resist snitching on me. You can't resist because you 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 hate it. So I would, I fucked a good, you can read the posts. Uh, it's public. Please download it now. It's an ebook. It's completely free on Gumroad. Um, People, you know, I'd fuck a girl in Sweden. I'd blur her face out. I'd, I'd change her name. And some dude would recognize the picture from her Instagram. Call her, some fat dude. Did you know this guy posted this about you? Then I've got her on my back. Then she tells other girls, you know, that they're on this page. And then more simps jump in. And every time I post, simps scroll through my Instagram followers to try and find the girl I posted about. They message her. Simps can't resist telling on you because they're jealous. So if I showed my real life, take confidential. I recently showed an episode where I invited nine of my girlfriends to my house at once and I was throwing a big party. And, you know, simps got in the comment section, well, those girls don't look very happy. That was the point. I invited nine girls to the same party and they all found out they were my girlfriend. Of course they looked sad. The <laughs> like, you think you're getting me? You think you're, you're, you think you got me by saying those girls aren't having very much fun at your party? Of course they weren't. The party was a setup. It's a big joke I played on all of them. So, um... No, I, I, and again, I didn't post their names and I tried to not show their faces too clearly because simps can't resist themselves. So, I mean, I, most guys don't ever run an ebook like the player's year or account like the player's year because they can never, ever live like me. You read it, it's beyond comparison. So everyone doesn't do it because they can't do it, but their excuse, the dudes who don't get laid and the dudes who are frauds will say, oh, well, I'd get exposed. My That's kind of true. But I did it anyway. I didn't give a fuck. Oh, I lost some girls. Boo-hoo. There's plenty more fishing to see. So, no, I won't do it again. I was thinking of making a, a series I was going to post on a, a non-sexual, non-pornographic OnlyFans account. Because OnlyFans do, you know, yoga influencers and chefs. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Any kind of influencer. And I was thinking of making an OnlyFans account where I show, you know, some more supercar content, some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, some of the girls I hang out with, some of the cooler parties. But I just thought, no. Because, one, I don't need the money. I really don't. And two, I don't owe it to people. I feel like, you know, with things like the players year and all that I show and all the receipts I put out there, I've proven my fucking point. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get a round of applause from some dorks on the internet saying, oh, well, those were good girls last week because they're just going to find them on Instagram and message them and say, Tristan's treating you bad. Why don't you date me instead? And I can't be bothered with the headache. Mm -hmm. So no. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I used to do something very similar. I used to, um, I still, it's still up there. It's playingfire.com love reports. And I showed like um, all the girls I would bang off Tinder with like all the screenshots. So I would show like from yeah. the opener to the part where she said, I loved fucking you. Like, right. Like yeah. everything. And then I would show a picture of the girl. Yeah. And I also stopped doing that a few years ago. Cause uh, it just, it, I just felt like my channel was becoming a little bigger. And then like, yeah, I just didn't want the bad publicity. Uh, but I also used to do that. I have like 30 or 40 of those like stories up there, at least 30. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, so that's interesting. Okay, so next question. So I don't know if you're actually going to want to answer this question or not, uh, but I have to ask this uh, because it was uh, highly requested. I'm kind of curious about this myself. Go ahead. So, okay, so I'm going to preface this question by saying this. Like, you know the saying, game can recognize game? Yeah. Yeah, so like I'm watching, you know, I'm somewhat familiar with you and your brother's content. I can tell you guys are legit. I can tell you guys get laid. I can tell just by the way you guys carry yourself, like in – Two minutes, I could tell you guys have fucked hundreds of girls, right? Yeah. To me, it was like a no-brainer, right? 
Uh, and I know you guys have the same ability. I know you guys can tell that as well. Like I have no doubt in my mind, which yeah. brings me to the question, why do you guys collab with Fresh and Fit? Because I know you guys know that those guys like are fucking retards, right? So what's like the motivation there? I'm curious. You know, and this is a question that I, I, I you know, I didn't know if this was going to come up because in this space on Twitter and in this space on the internet, all various people hate various people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So years and years ago, back at the beginning of, I guess, me getting into this, uh, whatever you want to call it, space in Twitter, I, I was hanging out with a guy who had a very big channel. I'm not, I'm not even going to say his name. I'm not going to put him on blast. Mm -hmm. But uh, he decided to come hang out with me in Bucharest. And his, I mean, for all of his posts and all of his tweets and all of his receipts and all of his Playboy bullshit that he posted, the guy was a complete fucking fraud. And I was shocked. I was like, okay, this guy's a fucking fake. But on the internet, it looks legit as fuck. So from that moment on, I decided to not give a shit what I see online. Mm -hmm. I am only going to judge people based on my personal experiences with them. That's it. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck what I see on the internet. So if I have a good personal experience with somebody, I'm going to, I'm, I, well, until I, until I have a bad one, then from, from, from my eyes, I'm going to take them at face value. Now I will t say about fresh and fit right now. I don't know. I didn't even know you disliked the guys. But I have met them in my life three times total, I believe. Mm. The first time I met them, they I was in Miami. They invited me out to a boat trip. I got on their boat. There was a bunch of girls on the boat who were not prostitutes and they were not escorts. They invited these girls. I was there. I fucked one of the girls who's some hot fucking half Israeli, half American chick. You know, they seemed to interact with the girls perfectly fine to me. And I met them at their podcast where, again, uh, all positive things. I've never had a negative experience with them. And mm -hmm. to be honest, unless I'm on the episode, I don't watch Fresh and Fit. Mm -hmm. No offense. I don't watch your podcast. I don't watch. Oh, no offense, I don't, I don't watch my friend Rolo Tomasi. I don't watch my friend Rich Cooper. I don't watch anybody. I'm busy mm -hmm. living the real life. So I don't follow what's on the internet. All I can do is vouch for people based on my personal experience I have with them in real life. And I've had nothing but good experiences with them. And I haven't seen anything negative with them. So, you know, and people are going to probably send me videos and say, here's an expose <laughs> of him. Here's an expose of him. There are exposés of almost everyone on the internet besides me and my brother. So I'm not watching. All I can do is, I've, I've never actually had anyone all, do a all I, can, all I can do is go on my real life experience. And, um, you know, real life experience, perfectly fine to me. Their boat trip was great. The girls they invited were great. They were not hookers. They were not paid for, which is a big red flag for me. Uh, you know, I fucked one of the girls. They didn't give a fuck. They were down with it. They were cool. They didn't mind that they bought the girls and I ended up fucking one of them. They had good interactions with the women that I saw. So, um... Why do I hang out with Fresh and Fit? I hang out with them sometimes, but from my experience, they're perfectly cool guys. Mm -hmm. But the, again, I have to hang out with you for a long period of time and get to know you very well before I can publicly vouch for you. And I'll mm -hmm. say it once. Uh, I'll say it again. I'll say it a thousand times. People like Jay Waller, who's very new in this space, and Sterling Cooper, I can vouch for them because they're my personal friends. I, ha I hang out with them. They mm -hmm. get laid. They fuck pussy. They don't pay. They're good with women. They're good wingmen. They've mm -hmm. got money. They're about it, you know, and I can vouch for them personally, yeah. but I won't vouch for or disavow anybody mm -hmm. if I haven't hung out with them. Okay, you know, interesting. You know? That's a fair answer. My the only one response I would have to that is just give it time. <laughs> I think I think it's only a matter of time before Fresh and Fit like does something that rubs you the wrong way. But okay, I'll, I'm not gonna like harp on this. We'll too see. Much. We'll yeah. see. But and but you know, couldn't anybody? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let me ask this question. Uh, this is something that a lot of people had were asking about in the comments. Uh, what are some profound truths you found in life? And I know it's kind of a general question, but uh, like, what are some like kind of like epiphanies you've had that you've realized about just like life and game in general? Jesus. Um, that's a very, that's a very tricky one. Uh, you know what? You'd have to, you'd almost have to be more specific. You'd really have to be more specific than that. So um, uh, well, I, mean, I could tell you a million things. I could tell you a million things. The things that I've learned from experience. I mean, basic shit like uh, money doesn't change somebody. It reveals who they really are. That's one I've definitely found. And I could talk more about that. But there's, there's loads of things I could say about my philosophy on life. Because I haven't changed poor or rich. You know, I was broke as fuck. Now I'm rich as fuck. I haven't changed 1%. I'm exactly the same person I've always been. I know people who ran into a little bit of money and became assholes. And people are like, oh, yeah, money changes people. No, it doesn't. He was always an asshole. He just didn't have the platform or the balls or the or the ego to say it, to say what he really thought. 
So, I mean, I could I could use basic examples like that, but you'd really have to be more specific if you wanted something. Uh, well, let me give you some of mine, some of the things that I've personally, like what would be my answer to that question? So one thing that I used to, I don't know if you ever had this, but growing up, I used to really care what a lot of people thought about me, right? I was always worried about like, you know, oh, what this person thought, what that chick thought. When you stop giving a shit what anyone thinks about you, your life becomes a lot easier and a lot simpler. And the mm. funny thing is, is that when you stop giving a shit what people think, a lot more people start to like you. Well, that's true. That's like one. Uh, weird, yeah, well, that's one weird thing I've realized. That's very uh, true, very true. But I've I've never really given that much of a shit. Um, uh-huh. Not really. So, but uh, yeah, it, it it makes life much easier for sure. Yeah. Another thing I realized is that money doesn't make you happier, but it makes things easier. That's kind of what I've noticed. Is that it just it just allows it just makes things easier in life. Like a lot of aspects of your life become easier but it doesn't make you happier per se it's still on you to find happiness but it does make i would say finding happiness easier but you still have to do it that's kind of yeah i think it really depends on what kind of person you are i think money is an accelerant if you're a depressed sad um you know person i believe you if you give a depressed sad person 10 million dollars they're gonna end up suicidal and if you give a very happy content fulfilled person 10 million dollars they're gonna be more happy more content and more fulfilled i think it's an accelerator so it really depends on where you are in life when people say things like money doesn't buy happiness, I would say, yes, it actually does. If you know what to buy, mm. Lamborghinis are cool. Bugattis are cool. But, you know, calling your mother and say, hey, mom, what, you're working that shitty job in that kitchen, washing those dishes. You know what? You never have to work again. Mm. That That's happiness. Yeah. yeah. You know? And yeah. no amount of, you know, being broke with good feelings, goodwill or pray is going to make that happen. It takes mm-hmm. money to make things like that happen. That, that's so a good I point. think it's about that's you know, have to know what to you have to know what to buy and you have to know what's really important in the world. Uh, when I needed this surgery on my shoulder, I called the same surgeon who did Conor McGregor's leg and Roger Federer's elbow. And oh, I paid forty five thousand dollars to go get the procedure done. You know, that's happiness. I don't want some fucking NHS surgeon fucking around with my arm. I only got, only got two arms. I can't afford yeah. to fuck one up. So yeah, I mean, it depends if you know what to buy, if you know what to spend it on. But uh, chasing material possessions is uh, is yeah, it's it's fun, but it's not it's not necessarily happiness. But I was always a very happy, content individual. So now I'm happy and content and rich as fuck. So it's great. Yeah. Let me ask you this question. What are you, what are your goals at this point? Like, what are you trying to accomplish? Oh, that's a, that's a question I can answer very easily. Cause people think that life is a game that you could complete. People think that you get to this point and boom. Okay. Goals accomplished. That's not the way life works. I'm going to give it a different analogy that will maybe make people think a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. Here's how life gets completed when you die. That's it. So we're all heading towards death. That's it. I see life very much like a train that's on a set of tracks. Now, the ride is much smoother if the the train stays on the tracks. That's it. Uh, My train is perfectly on track, and I'm heading in the the same direction as everybody else, but I'm comfortable as fuck in my luxurious train car, having a nice, smooth ride. I want to keep my train on track. That's it. And whether I have, you know, some children now, some grandchildren in the future, I take up a new business venture. I make more money. I make less money. It's not about necessarily what my goals are, because I could be making more money right now if I opened another webcam studio and work 24 hours a day. But I don't want to anymore. I want my train to stay on the tracks and stay running smooth. And every minute, every, every minute of my life and every day that I wake up to be a beautiful day and to be a happy day. And I'm now at the point and I've been through some fucking rough patches in my past. I really have. And my train is is perfectly smooth now. I'm going to keep it on the track. That's it. Do you like, for example, for me personally, like I write out goals for myself. So I have like my, like, for example, I'm trying to uh, this year, one of the things I would like to accomplish is to take my channel to 500,000 subscribers, right? Like, so yeah. do you have stuff like that that you're working on? Like, more specific? Ugh, honestly, no. I mean, each day, each day is a new fight. I know that to keep my, to keep my train on the track each day, I wake up. How much money have I made when I wake up? Usually zero or very low. I need to get that number up. I need to make sure that I'm making enough money to maintain my lifestyle, to keep taking care of my mother, keep taking care of the people who I take care of, keep taking care of my kids. I need to, um, you know, I have, I have personal goals daily, but really no. If my channel gets banned, boo-hoo. If my channel blows up, then excellent. I don't really set goals in, in that kind of way. That's interesting. You know? Okay. That's like yeah. the one thing you said during this interview that kind of surprised me actually is yeah. that, because I would expect you uh, cause you guys are like, you know, very like type a, like highly motivated. So yeah. I would expect you guys to have like, you know, like yearly goals, monthly goals. Well, that's interesting. So you kind of, you just kind of free. Yeah, it's, it's a daily thing. I keep my train on track. 
But but I guess I had goals back then, back when my train was not on the fucking track and it was driving up and down the mountains and everything was rough and everything was fucked. Um, yeah, you know, I wanted to win more kickboxing fights. I needed to become British champion, then European champion. I, you know, um, make my first million dollars was a big one for me. And but you know, by the time you make your first million, everything's running smoothly. And mm-hmm. you know, I've just accelerated that, and everything's just going so well. You know, touch wood. I just hope everything keeps keeps going this way. Way. Until uh, I eventually meet the end. But by the time I do, I want to have a bunch of beautiful kids, be surrounded by my grandkids in my big old house. Everyone well taken care of. Everyone's eating. Everyone's well fed. But yeah, my, my goals are daily. Keep my train on the track. That's okay, it. That's, that's interesting. Is there any books that you've read that you would highly recommend or that have been like influential in your life? Mm, yes and no. Uh, my, my brother always preaches against reading. And I agree with him. Because let me tell you something. Reading is entertainment. And a lot of reading, if you're reading these kind of motivational books, you know, the laws of power, the blah, to me, it's success porn. You know, people read these books and they get these really good feelings and the feelings wear off. And they go back to their job and nothing changes in their life. I read recreationally. So I wouldn't say books have changed my life. They've increased my understanding of things. They've increased my knowledge of, of history and literature. And the, some of them are very cool stories. I mean, I like Bram Stoker's Dracula, the Ian Fleming, James Bond books. I like them. But... Mm-hmm. This is my entertainment for the same reason somebody watches Netflix. I don't necessarily think they're going to help you in life. I don't think they're going to help me. I don't think they're going to make me a better person. I don't think they're going to make me any money. I just like books sometimes for the same reason anyone watches a TV show. Uh And um, I agree with my brother in the way that reading is a waste of time. If you're broke and you want to be successful, reading a bunch of books is not going to help you. I really don't believe it is. So, um, yeah. Books are entertaining. My favorite book, uh, The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. Mm. Wonderful piece of literature. Took me fucking, God knows, a week and a half, two weeks to get through. And it was brilliant. And what did I learn from it? I learned that The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas is an entertaining book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, okay, that's interesting. I mean, I think that's a fair point that book that sometimes you can go down the rabbit hole of like success porn where you're just like, you're, you're like kind of enjoying the fantasy of being successful, but you're not actually putting in any work. So I think that's a fair point. I think like, you know, with anything, you need moderation. And even with like self-help books, like if you're just sitting around all day reading self-help books, that's you're not actually self-helping yourself. Exactly. Um, you're helping so you, the author, the guy who wrote the book, you're helping him. Yeah, you need that like moderation uh, for sure. Yeah. I was just curious if there's like any books that like were super influential for you. Uh, for me personally, I would say that uh, actually people are going to laugh at this, but the Game of Thrones books were like pretty, uh, had, a, had a good impact on how I see the world. Uh, in terms of power struggles and like social situations and right versus wrong, like those books were pretty impactful on me. Uh, but they're also very entertaining. Um, okay, so let's. Uh, there's a bunch of questions in the chat, so let me take a few of the good ones. Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay. Uh, okay, this question. Uh, question for Tristan: How's the quality of women in Prague, and either hard to get or more open? Um, Prague. Uh... <sighs> Jesus. So I've kind of, I meet a lot of women in Prague because I hang out in Prague a lot. Um, They're easy to get if you're me. I don't know who you are. Uh, Typically Prague, the women stay away from tourists. Prague gets more tourists per day than Moldova gets every two years. So Mm -hmm. you can understand hundreds and hundreds of Western dudes going over there hoping for a hot Czech girl. Girls in the Czech Republic hide away from tourists. They're not in the clubs you go to. They're not in the bars you go to. Um, you have to know where to look. I have a lot of local knowledge. I actually kind of speak the language actually quite well. I speak Slovak. Slovak and Czech oh, are very similar. So I, I speak the language quite well. Um, so you have to know the local spots and where the girls hang out. And if you're me, who knows a little bit of their language and you're a top tier dude, yeah, I guess getting the girls is relatively easy in Prague and is doable. But I don't know who you are. If you're some short, fat, broke geek going there with a hard on hoping to snag some super hot Czech girl, you're not going to walk into some bar or club that tourists, you know, tour guides advertise to you and you know and she's going to fall into your lap it's a high level instagram game and stuff like that but the quality of women in prague if you know where to look is uh, exceptional the women in, in the czech republic are fucking beautiful yeah my, my observation is i've been to prague twice is that prague yeah. is fairly easy it's a lot easier than uh romania that's for sure yes uh, like, for every sure. time i would go to prague i would usually bang like one chick a day or something like that like something it was it was fairly easy and i did have some like crazy fucking like sexual encounters in Prague. Like I remember yeah. one time 
Uh, there was this chick that my buddy went on a Tinder date with, and she was like this really, really hot blonde baker. Like, you know, like in America, like, you know, people who work in the food service industry, they're usually not that attractive. This chick she's was like eight baker. or nine, and she's working as a fucking baker. And I'm just like trying to imagine, like, how is she not getting like molested in the kitchens? And so it was like, it was a crazy shit. Like, he banged her, and then my Tinder date got there, and we all had like a giant orgy. And then he used these handcuffs on this chick, and then he lost the key to the handcuffs. So I had to like pick the lock it was like this whole fucking crazy endeavor. that was crazy can so, i can i address something in the chat yeah of course anek is obviously a loser game is six foot four and be good looking mm -mm. game well knowing english would help but to address this uh comment i have an argument which is which you know i'm happy to throw out there anytime there is a hypothetical universe if, if the world was a multiverse where every possibility could po could possibly happen there's a different, there's a, there's an alternate reality where Tristan Tate, born of the same parents who had the same circumstances in life, doesn't take up kickboxing, doesn't take up business, plays video games all day, probably like Anek does. Anek's probably playing his fucking PlayStation all day, jerking off over the webcam girls, uh, enjoys porn. And I'm six foot four, but I've got a bit of a hunchback. I've got a fat belly, super skinny arms, super skinny traps, no money, no interests. No, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not an interesting person, person. I'm not interesting to talk to. I'm not knowledgeable. I've never learned anything. And I play video games all day. How mm. much do you think that version of Tristan Tate gets laid? Do you think he's out there slaying pussy? Or do you think he's at his mother's house jerking off to porn all day because he can't afford to go anywhere? And because he's not, you know, why the fuck would he go anywhere? So no, yeah, six foot four and good looking. Yeah, maybe, but good looking is also your physique. It's your build. That's 15 years of hard work, my friend, Anek. And if I was a, fat dork my face would be all fucking ugly as well so yeah you're completely wrong there six foot four yeah it's cool to be tall but again you know to become a man like me is is years and years and years of hard work and you're obviously not willing to put the work in so it's easy to dismiss it and just say oh well you know tristan's six foot four and good looking yeah and tristan's a millionaire yeah cool you stay who you are and i'll stay who i am and I'll yeah that's, that's a fair point i mean i definitely agree with you there's an alternative reality where i'm also like a massive loser like exactly. I, lost my, I lost my virginity when i was 19. i didn't yeah. really start getting late until i was like 23 24 and that was years of going out and getting rejected and being yeah. depressed and being sad and you could have stayed that way yeah, yeah, yeah no, sure. so there's definitely definitely that reality yeah. that could have very easily existed if some yeah. things my life went differently okay let me let me let's take this question how much money do you need to make per month to live a millionaire life in your opinion how much money well to, to, I, I, it's a trick question. To, make a mil to live a millionaire life, like, a millionaire isn't that rich. Um, a millionaire, I'll be perfectly honest. It, it's a term that was that was coined in the 1940s, 50s, and it was a big deal back then. But even in the 80s and 90s, you're a millionaire. Okay, you got some money. Millionaire means net worth one million dollars. You have a house worth six hundred thousand paid off. You have a car worth fifty thousand. You have a few stocks, a few bond options, and you have fifty thousand dollars in the bank. That's millionaire. That's broke. Uh, to live my life, you need a lot of fucking money. I mean, I have $12, $13 million worth of cars. This house that I'm in cost me over $2.5 million, um, which in Romania is very expensive. I know $2.5 million maybe wouldn't get me so much elsewhere in the world, but I, I certainly have the money. Uh, mm -hmm. How much money do you need to live a millionaire lifestyle? Um, a, a lot per month. I, I'd say I wouldn't be able to live at all if I didn't make $100,000 a month. But mm -hmm. my life is is exceptional. And again, that comes down to hard work. And also depends what you're interested in, bro. And it's, I'm not hating at all when I say this. Maybe you just want a cabin in the forest and you want to shoot some guns and do some hunting and live a nice simple life and go camping sometimes. And what are you into? Because in which case you don't need money at all. And you could, you know, so it depends what your lifestyle is and what your interests are. Yeah, I yeah. like living the way I live and it takes a lot of money. Yeah. And also really depends on where you live. Like some places are just so much more expensive than others. Yeah. Like my dad often jokes around. He's like, oh, he's like, when you go to Col if you go to move to Colombia, you with your money, you can be like a rich person there instead of like upper middle class in America. So it's like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's true. It's true, but I don't. I wouldn't want to live in Colombia. But uh, Romania. I mean, you've been to Romania. Is that the truth? Is when you do things like me, people will say uh, Romania is cheap. Yeah, groceries are cheap, and you know, f f taxis are cheap. I don't take taxis, and I don't. Eat, I don't buy groceries. I eat at the finest restaurants every day. A bottle of Dom Perignon in a club in Romania is the same price as France or Russia or anywhere else. Uh -huh. I mean, they don't, I mean, it's not, you're going to buy Dom Perignon for one pound because you're in Romania, one dollar, sorry. And you're not going to pick up a Lamborghini for five dollars because it's Romania. The top tier expensive shit costs the same everywhere else in the world, everywhere you go. 
So if you want to have a Rolls Royce and a Lamborghini and a Ferrari and, you know, buy champagne every night and eat at the best restaurants, life's expensive. doesn't matter where in the world you live. You can go to Colombia. A Lamborghini is going to cost the same $350,000 it's going to cost in America or Romania. Or so, you know, when people dig at me, oh, well, Romania is cheap. That's why you live there. I'm like, yeah, sure, bro. Yeah, the Rolls Royce was 10 bucks. I picked it up from a gypsy on the street. Well, just, I don't, I don't, I don't even know why that's an insult. Like that's being called being smart. Maybe, maybe, and my, maybe my house. I mean, my house is a twelve bedroom house. It's got a pool, jacuzzi. It's big. It's, it's worth well over two million dollars. Again, but at the same time, I could, I could afford a ten million dollar house. I'm buying property in Dubai. I'm building a castle right now. That's going to cost me. Yeah, I heard money. about that. Yeah, you and your brother, like, where you bought some like Dra- like something right next to Dracula's fucking. Yeah. Dance. So if you have Twitter or. Uh, Twitter or Instagram, follow this page. It's uh, anonymous right now, but that page is the progress right now. I've bought the land and um, construction will start very soon. Uh, the architect is still working on the drawings, but uh, yeah, I'm building a castle next to Dracula's castle. That's going to cost me $5 million. So you like, or probably more, you know, that's an estimate. Dude, that's fucking you know? epic. When you yeah. guys build that, I want to come and visit you and check Thank that you. out. It will be done in about four years time. Okay. But, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a big fan of like uh, like history and shit, and like I like. Yeah. The, I invite uh, you to the opening party, bro. It'll be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, sounds good, man. All right, so we got this question: How do you deal with being called poor during growing up, Tristan? Do you have to just stick through it until you become successful? Um, I think that this guy uh, writing, my, my friend uh, Michael, maybe uh, grew up poor when when he's in kind of an affluent and rich part of town. Where I grew up, everybody was poor. So I grew up on a council estate in Luton in England, a council estate called Marsh Farm. You can Google it if you want. Crime ridden shithole. Everybody was poor. So nobody called me poor. <laughs> Everyone was poor. So no, I, I couldn't answer your question. It may be different if you're the poor kid growing up in a rich neighborhood or something. That wasn't me. So I, I really I don't know how to answer your question. I'm not the right guy to ask. Find yeah, I wouldn't be either. Like, we, we, yeah, I wouldn't be either because I, I we grew up like upper middle class. So I, I never really had that. My dad was pretty successful. Question, do you still talk to your coach Amir occasionally, and will you ever fight again? Uh, I will never fight again. Too many injuries. Um, too many injuries at this point. I will miss fighting my whole life. And uh, Amir is the closest thing, I guess, I have to a father figure in the world. I mean, uh, Amir and a, a gentleman who helps me run the war room, uh, he probably wouldn't want me saying his name. But I, I have a few guys who I look up to, um, and Amir is one of them. And I speak to him when I get the chance, absolutely. But no, I, will, I think I'm retired from professional fighting at this point. Yeah, lots of injury. Yeah, I feel you on that. Yeah. This, this is a somewhat personal question, but someone asked, question, now that you have success kids, do you agree that homeschooling to a certain age is better or like, like what's your what's your philosophy on that? Um, the philosophy is very simple, very simple answer to this one. I live in Eastern Europe. The school system is not filled with woke garbage like America and Canada and the United Kingdom. So I have no problem sending my kids to a public school because of where I live. Um, if I lived in the United States, I would certainly fucking homeschool them. And uh, I, I, I network with the other kids and families who, who, who homeschool in my area and make sure that my friend, my kids get normal social interaction. But um, here in Romania, I have no problem sending my kids to a public school. They don't learn the same, you know, toxic bullshit you do in the West. Yeah. Well, dude, it wasn't that bad when I was growing up. Like, uh, it, it's it, it's changed yeah. a lot in the last ten years. Yeah, like when, when I went to, because uh, I went to middle school and high school in the U.S. Right. Like I was born in Belarus. I moved to the U.S. when I was seven. And uh, when I was growing up here, like it was like schooling here was normal. Like I had a good experience. And in college, I had a good experience. I went to like a top, you know, private university, Boston University. Mm-hmm. Like there wasn't any of this nonsense. Like I, yeah, like I sure I didn't get that much practical knowledge, but like it wasn't, I wasn't taught anything dumb. It's like in the last five, seven years that like the public education system just really went downhill in the U.S. with all Agreed. that nonsense. So yeah. it's, it's weird when I hear stories like that. Like sometimes I'll bang college girls and I'll ask them like, yeah, you know, like what's what's college like? And what they tell me college is like is so different than what yeah, college is like. Yeah, brainwashing. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. that's, that part is like super recent. Yeah, um, but that was easy, easy for me to answer. Yeah. Someone asked, what things should someone be focusing on if they're earning good money already but want to level up? What should be the next focus other than money? Again, depends what you're good at. You know, I, I could say open casinos. You know, maybe I'm the wrong person to ask. I don't know. Cryptocurrency is always good, though. Uh, decentralized finance, uh, depending on where the world, you, where in the world you live in, you know, get a good community of people uh, inside the war room. We have a, a, a whole room of, of professional crypto guys, uh, crypto millionaires who, who teach, you know, what they know. They give tips and tricks and advice, you know, buy some crypto coins, hold them, change them into Bitcoin when you make some profit. I mean, it's a good store of wealth, I think, for the future, in my opinion. But honestly, I don't really like to give financial advice. 
If I gave financial advice here and told someone to buy a certain thing and you lost all your money, I'd feel bad. I really would. I'd feel obligated to pay you back. So mm. I don't know. Do we, do what you're good at, bro. I don't know what you're good at, Brandon, but best of luck with it. If you're making some good money, you're you're off to a good start. So good luck. In your personal experience and your personal opinion, I mean, do you think that um, Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to explode in next year or do you think it's... I, I mean, I, I can only tell you what I what I bet on. I If it explodes, I'll be very rich. I'm, I'll be very, very rich then, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I have my money where my mouth is. I think Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to explode. I have I have some cryptocurrencies. If it does blow up, I'm happy. If it all goes to zero, then I, whatever. I've still got some other money. So, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll put my money where my mouth is and say I am a believer in cryptocurrency. So I yeah. do have a lot of cryptocurrency. Yeah, I just recently invested in crypto uh, like uh, a few weeks ago. So I'm also hoping that um, I had like some insider information yeah. that I can't reveal, but that suggest that there's a good chance that there's going to be some growth in the next uh few uh months so yeah. uh yeah so we'll see what happens but yeah, yeah but we'll I, I agree with you i i find it weird when people invest all their uh wealth into crypto because that to me like i would never do that i would never take all my money and put it into crypto yeah. right because for yeah. me if crypto goes to zero i'll still be okay i'm not going to be broke right yeah but then there are other types of investment. People who don't understand money will say stupid things to me like, oh man, you bought a $300,000 car. You're dumb because you're going to lose 20000 the moment you drive it away from the showroom. You have to understand, I don't give a fuck about $20,000. That's what you don't understand about me. Like These are people who have no money. They see that $20,000 drop and they're like panicking for, for me. I'm like, you don't understand how little $20,000 is to me. If I lost everything tomorrow, including my house and everything went to shit, I could sell one car every six months for the next fucking i don't know 10 years and and live off that money so mm -hmm. my cars are a store of wealth in a way and my, like my aston and my bugatti they're only gonna go up in value some of them go down in value some go up you know that's the way it is but you know it's not so much an investment it's more of a diversification if crypto goes to zero i've got 12 million dollars worth of cars i can sell i can make six million in the next week or two so mm -hmm. it is what it is so uh, I'm, I'm 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 hopefully insulated from that i'm beyond going broke now Mm. Someone asked, what makes Eastern Europe so much better than the West? Can you give some examples? Uh, I could tell you what makes it worse, and I could tell you what makes it better. Uh, mm. It depends how you want to live. Um, I, I just like the political situation out here. I feel like people are a lot more grounded and a lot more based, I guess, if you share my political affiliations. But I don't really get political. Um, Eastern Europe is, is a place where you're more free to live the way you want. I mean, if in England you try to buy a car with cash, you know, the, the HMRC and the tax office are going to come after you and ask where you got the cash. I can prove where I got it from, but I just don't like that level of uh, mm -hmm. of regulation. You know, here in Eastern Europe, you could buy a car with cash if you have cash nodes. It's a lot more of a relaxed kind of atmosphere. But at mm -hmm. the same time, it's a lot more hostile. So if you're not about it, if you can't handle yourself, Romania is the last place you should move to because someone's going to fuck you up and take what you have. Uh, but, you know, there are advantages and disadvantages. I just like the freedom. I feel like it's more of like a, an America in the 1960s kind of vibe out here. It's a lot more free. I could say and do what I want and live how I want without so many judgments. Yeah, well, in America right now, it's like heavily depends on what state you're in. Like I live in Florida, yeah. which is a lot more free than like, say, California, right? Exactly. So like, like almost a completely different country. Exactly. In a way. Okay, someone asked this question. Uh, Tristan, were you popular in high school? What do people from school think about you now that you're rich? People from school look me up sometimes. I was just in, you know, in high school, I wasn't necessarily popular. I was just a, a guy. I wasn't even that tall or big until I was maybe 19 years old. I was still growing till I was 19. I started a little bit late. But, you know, I, I remember I finished my education at 16 years old. Uh, people always think that I'm a uh, university educated or something because of the way I speak and how knowledgeable I am and what I know. Uh, I've self-educated. Uh, I don't have a, a higher education. So I finished high school at 16. So a lot of the people who looked me up were just acquaintances, people who I barely knew. You know, I was, I was friends with these people half my life ago. Um, but yeah, people look me up now and they're, they're, they're impressed. Um, a lot of them are super jealous and they, they mask it with the, oh my God, well, you've done well, but I've got my kids and my dog and things money can't buy. I'm like, well, I've got kids and a dog too. I've got four dogs, motherfucker. And I've also got fucking $50 million. So leave me the fuck alone. So it's always some idiot coming at me or someone actually genuinely congratulating me. But, um, I don't care what they think is the short answer. So I, you know, I scan the replies and I scan the messages I get. But I just, I don't give a fuck what people think. And I wasn't really popular in high school, but I wasn't unpopular. No one picked on me. Um, I started getting bigger. I started learning kickboxing uh, when I was 14. But I wasn't necessarily popular. I was just a guy. I did. I had, I got very good grades. The teachers liked me. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Nothing okay. special to mention. 
Okay, gotcha. So someone says this, you and your brother have great game, but different personalities. Tristan seems to be more introverted. Does that affect your strategy for approaching women? No, no. I mean, we, we always work as a team. I mean, if we have basic rules in life that we both follow, though. If you see a hot girl at the bar and she's by herself, immediately stand up and walk over. Don't, don't say to your friends, oh, I'm thinking of talking to that girl. Hey, what do you think of that chick? Immediately get up and walk over. So does that change my game when it comes to approaching? No. We might say different things, but we have the exact same attitude on that. Um, our personality is, I mean, introverted. It, it depends who we're with. Andrew will seem a lot more extravagant online where I may seem more introverted, but I can be more extravagant in the real in real life when Andrew's more introvert, introverted. So it, it's hard to analyze us, uh, Nev Santos, from just an online perspective. It's mm -hmm. very hard to analyze us and get a, a grip of who we are. But in terms of approaching and getting women, we have very similar strategies, very different appetites. His type isn't my type. Uh, he prefers to have a few, you know, hot girlfriends, whereas I prefer to chase new girls all the time, as well as have a few hot girlfriends till it blows up in my face. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we're slightly different. But it's essentially, when it comes to that, we're, we're similar. Mm -hmm. Someone asked, PWF, how do you feel about Tate saying Eastern Europe is more free? I mean, I agree with him. I completely agree. Um, it's more of like the wild, wild west in a way, which can be a good thing in a lot of ways. It's a bad thing. It, it, it's similar a lot to uh, like South America, like Colombia and Brazil in a lot of ways. Like it's more free, which can be a good thing and a bad thing, right? Like if, yes. you're, so, if you're kind of like a little bit of a pushover and a pussy, that can actually work against you because, yeah, like oh, the shark's absolutely. Absolutely. But if you're, you know, if you're the shark, then that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan of Eastern Europe. Like, I, I've traveled throughout Eastern Europe. I love Eastern Europe. I love Eastern European women. I prefer South America a little bit more, but uh, I like both places. So, yeah, you know, the reason I live in America has nothing to do with me not liking Eastern Europe. If I prefer Eastern Europe, but I have, like, my own reasons for living in the U.S. Uh, okay, so what other questions do we have? Uh Okay, someone said, ask this question. It's like an, a little bit of a philosophical question. Tristan, can a beta become an alpha? So do you believe that a guy who's like, that guy who's jerking off to the webcam can transform himself and become a alpha or is he just like fucked? Well, it's a trick question. I, I believe that, I don't believe anyone is necessarily born beta or alpha. You, I mean, there are mass, massive advantages that some people are born with, the massive disadvantages that others are born with. Yeah. I feel like the older you get, it's the older, you can't teach an old dog new tricks saying, the, the more ingrained in a certain lifestyle you become, the harder it is to break out of. So if you're if, if you, Dan uh, Russell, if you are 46 years old and you've been a webcam customer your whole life and you're fat as fuck and you're out of shape. Sorry, bro. You're probably never going to ever, ever experience a life like mine because you've wasted your potential. Uh, you know, you're, you're fat as fuck. Uh, this is hypothetical, Dan. It's hypothetical. Yeah. You're fat as fuck. You're never you're never going to have the testosterone level or the energy level to get in the shape that I'm in. I'm only 33. But, Dan, if you're 20 years old and you're a bit chubby, you're starting to get into webcam models and you think you can turn your life around. Absolutely, you can. Absolutely, you can. You know, follow people like me, maybe join the war room, learn from some of the some of the people who, you know, you know, I who I liaise with and you can turn your life around. But the, but the longer you spend in a certain lifestyle, the harder it is to get out of for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I, so, I agree with you. I think age is like the biggest factor almost in a way like time is the one thing you cannot get back and youth is yeah. the one thing you cannot get back like if you're in your 40s you are at a big disadvantage of a guy who's in his 20s that's just yeah. what it is uh so the earlier you get started the better for sure yeah. no 100 percent with everything someone someone said this uh when is the tate brothers going on rogan joe rogan uh no idea joe, joe now follows andrew on instagram he's aware of him uh he's aware of us uh we'll see i don't know it'll happen when it happens no rush Again, the train's on track. I'm in no rush to make anything happen. The train, the train's running fine. That, that's so. That's literally like out of this whole podcast. Like everything you said, I kind of like you know I could kind of expect your answers, right? But that's yeah. the one thing you said that was a curveball to me because I figured you guys would be like very structured in your goals and shit. So, you, but you guys have more of like a laser fair approach where you just kind of like you know just yeah. kind of each day wake up, make sure I make enough money, yeah. make sure I have enough fun, make sure I enjoy my life enough, make sure I keep putting content out there, make sure people still know who I am. Joe Rogan will message us when he messages us, or he might not. Who gives a shit? Life's great. I'm sure he's watching this podcast, so Joe Rogan, hit them up. All right, yeah. so uh, yeah. we got this question. Which African countries do you enjoy visiting? Which African countries? Jesus, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't been to many. Uh, the answer is none of them. Um, Egypt, if you want to count it as Africa, is North Africa. Um, none of them. 
None of them that I've been to, and I'm not. I'm not going to say which ones I've been to because I don't want to offend anyone. But but none of them. So <laughs> yeah, I don't okay. know. And if you if you like it, if you like your various African countries and you travel to them and you enjoy it, good. Everyone has different tastes. I also didn't like South Korea and places that people really kiss their ass. So you know, here's what it is. Uh, dude, that's funny. A lot of people don't like South Korea. Uh, apparently, what I heard, I've never been to South Korea, but what I've heard is that. Um, there's a lot of like racism against white people there. So like the Korean dudes get like really upset when they see a white guy with a Korean girl. I like you know, literally, literally there's this one guy, he's also named Alex, funny enough, but he had a Korean girlfriend and he would say literally that they would walk around on the street and Korean guys would just go up and just like say something Korean, like, oh, cha, cha. and then like, the, he'd be like, what did you say? Uh, what did they say? And the girl would start crying. He called me a slut because I'm with a white guy, blah, blah, blah. So I was you like, you know what? I, I don't want to upset anyone, but you know what? Good for them. If people are going to Korea to fuck their women, a little bit of hostility to outsiders is, is a wonderful thing. And nowadays people call it racism. I don't think it's racist at all. Romanians are like that. If you're an old city and you're an English person, you're screaming, you know, fucking around or trying to talk to Romanian women. Some dude might just say, hey, what the fuck are you doing in my country? Because he doesn't like you. Now, mm -hmm. Natural hostility to outsiders exists in almost every successful country, company, uh, friendship circle that, uh, that there is in the world. So I don't know. Do I really look down on the Korean men for doing that? No. If I was in Korea, which I was, uh, trying to chase pussy, which is what I was doing, and they said to this girl, oh, you're fucking that white guy. He's only here to, you know, fuck pussy. They're right. You caught me. Like, what the fuck am I going to say? No, mate. I'm really in love with her. I don't even remember the Korean girl's fucking names. Too hard to pronounce. So they're right. Yeah, in, in a way. I mean, I think the, the point he was making is that it's a lot worse in Korea. Uh, again, I've never been there, so I can't comment yeah. on this, but I've heard from uh, quite a few people. Uh, so you've never been to South America? This is going to be your first time going to Colombia? Yeah, I, I don't want to go to South America. South American women aren't necessarily my type as such. And uh, yeah, I've had no desire to go. Again, I think it's I think it's easy mode. I'm definitely going to prove that it's easy mode, for sure. I live in one of the hardest countries to get laid that, that I know of, where there are beautiful hot women and plenty of South American are hot enough. And I'll, you know, I'll probably take some to bed and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll write it up for the guys inside the war room and I'll let them know how it went. But Dude, I'm, I think I'm not gonna, bothered think about gonna, going to South America. I'm perfectly happy right here in Bucharest. I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to, I think you're, I'm curious to, uh, we should chat after you get back from your trip. Yeah. I think, sure, I'll I'll I think. I think you're going to love it. That's like, so I would, bet, I would bet like if I had to bet money, I would bet like a good amount of money that you're going to be like fucking love Colombia. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, someone says, uh, does Tristan play for a game depend on ethnicity? Uh, okay, so someone says, does Tristan think places for game depending on ethnicity? My uh, friend, natural friend, and I, both black, had way better results in Serbia and Sweden than Bulgaria. Okay, so the question is, like, are certain countries better for certain ethnicities, which is an interesting Yeah, I, mean, I guess, yeah. And I don't even call this racism at all because I believe a personal sexual preference is perfectly yeah. normal. I mean, if a white girl says, I only date black guys, everyone's like, yeah, cool. Um, you know, and if a white girl, if a, if, a, if a black girl says only date white guys, cool. It's when men say it that people start saying it's racist. If I say I'm not really into South American chicks, someone will go, oh, that's racist. Or, yeah, yeah. you know, if someone says they're not into black chicks, that's racist. No, it's not. I'm not yeah. into Asian chicks either. Like, it's it's personal sexual preference. And I think every country has that. Oh. Um, I don't know what it's like to be, although I'm mixed race, and I am. My father was a black man. I'm not a black man. But I do believe you. I do believe it's harder to get laid in, in Romania. And I've had my black friends come out and visit and they have got laid because they hung around me. But a lot of girls are more, uh, they're very curious to talk to them, but also a bit, I don't know, it's different. So I don't know what it's like, but I definitely believe it was harder in Lithuania and Bulgaria than it was in, in the Western nations because they're, they're used to seeing black people over there. Here in Romania, I almost never see black people. So mm -hmm. yeah, my, my so women are more, I guess, more skeptical, more curious. It's more of a novelty. They're not racist out here. It's mm. just they uh yeah, when I had my my cameraman who was filming my take confidential series with me, the women were just curious to talk to him, but they didn't necessarily think, oh, this guy's gonna stick around, I'm gonna fuck him. And you know, he didn't have that much luck in that way. But yeah, I'll, I'll I'll kind of give my two cents on that. So yeah. I have a theory. I think that um like in more of like the southern countries, right? People's skins are darker, right? So yeah. when you when you get to like more of like the South European countries. I think there's almost like a little thing where people like there's a hierarchy system where the lighter you are, potentially the higher value you are. Right. So like people want to be more light skinned. Right. So in a place mm. like that, like like southeastern Europe, 
as a black guy, if you go there, like it's like, oh, he's so his skin is super dark, right? That's not like we're trying to be lighter. Versus you go to Sweden, everyone is super light skinned, right? Like no one is trying to be lighter yeah. because it's already everyone's already super fucking light. But also in Sweden, they're all hoes and they're easy to fuck. So yeah. My <laughs> yeah, that's also true. It doesn't matter if you're black, brown, Chinese, white, tan like me, Swedish. Well, they, yeah, they just have more like liberal attitude towards sex, basically. Yeah. There's less so, religion. I, I wouldn't marry a Swede, but I had some fun over in Stockholm. Someone said this. Uh, does Tristan advocate to always use protection? Um, I advocate to doing whatever you want to do for yourself. I mean, depends what you're trying to avoid. I mean, do is using protection smart? Yeah, it depends. You're trying to have kids with a girl? If, if so, you can't, you know? Depends. I advocate you to live life the way that you want. But obviously, you have to have some due diligence and you have to be safe. I'm still a healthy dude. I like to be a healthy guy. Um, depending on the girl I'm with, I guess, is the answer. But I also don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't um, preach that you should live the exact same way. If you live in Nigeria or a country like uh, Ghana, which is, you know, ravaged by HIV, right. yeah, I'd probably use protection all the time. I don't know where you're from. I don't know where you live. Uh, Romania, again, it depends on the girl that I'm with, but Romania has the lowest instances of HIV and AIDS in all of Europe. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not really a big worry in the back of my mind, like it would be when I'm in California, for example. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. Live the way you want, my friend. Don't take advice like that from me. Uh, we've all had the same level of sexual education. We all know, you know, which protection is, works and which ones don't and what they're good for. So you you do you. Okay, fair enough. Someone says, do you have daily habits, routines, and things you must do every day, week to keep yourself in check or do you just wing it? Make money and train. Make money and train. Each day, if I haven't trained, I'll, I'll be mad at myself. I haven't trained for months now. This is me in horrible shape because of the, the operation on my shoulder. I haven't trained in months now. So, yeah, if I don't make any money in a day, I'll be pissed. And if I don't train in a day, I'll be pissed. That's it. Make more money, do more training. Just to keep my, keep, my, keep my train on track. Fair enough. Let's take one last question. I think this is a good question to end it off on. because Sure. It's one. Alex, question. Three golden rules about women that everyone should know according to the talisman. Three golden rules about women that everybody should know. Um I mean, they're, they're very, I guess some of them are very obvious. Women chase excellence. Women don't necessarily want someone who's uh, rich or someone who's smart. They want someone who's excellent. Uh, the top tier men in the world, you could take someone like Floyd Mayweather, who oh. can't read, and he's five foot five, uh, but he's the best in the world at boxing. That, that, that means he's an excellent man and women chase after that. So there's no real rule to women. I would say that women chase excellence and you have to work on every single aspect of yourself if you want to attract a large plethora of women. Uh, two, women are a lot more forgiving to uh, you having other women than people would think if you are a top tier dude. So some guys would say to me, oh, my girlfriend would never, ever cheat. And I'm like, well, if she, uh, sorry, my girlfriend would never, ever accept me cheating. And I'm like, well, if she was with me, she would. And she's like, no, you don't know my girlfriend. A lot of girls who I know, who I associate with, who are loyal to me, broke up with their ex because their ex cheated. And then they get in a relationship with me and they're happy to share me. It also de it depends on who you are. So I would say that women are a lot more open to sharing a top tier man than you would possibly believe. And I know that because I've lived it. And um, golden rule number three. Golden rule number three. Um... I don't think there's, I, I think, uh, golden rule number three, it depends if I'm talking about women or about my relationships with women. Uh, women are, you know, it, just wanting, women are, women are wonderful and they're good for so much more than just sex. I would say rule number three is that women are the single greatest thing and the best thing in the world and they're the best thing about life. And if you have a simplistic caveman mindset where you think, I just need to fuck these girls, I need to have sex with all these girls, I think you're going to miss out on it. And I know I covered this earlier in the podcast. But there's so many amazing things about women. And I think that women need men and men need women. And uh, the male-female sexual uh, relationship and interaction is, is the most beautiful thing about life. But you have to master most other things before you can master this. Um, and if you disagree, then you're probably, again, not playing on my level. I mean, I, I agree with everything you said. I think these are all good points. Uh, mm -hmm. To quickly rehash, because I think these are important, uh, I do agree very much that, yes, if you're a top-tier guy, that uh, women will be a lot more forgiving uh, about the uh, you seeing other girls for sure. I've seen that myself firsthand. 
Uh, chasing excellence is a really good way to get women. Yes, if you're like really good at something, doesn't even really matter that much what it is. But yeah. you could be really good, you know, like a fucking top tier video game guy. Like you could be the best. Literally, you'll get, you'll get some women. Yeah. yeah, and there's some women who are going to be into that. Yeah. Uh, there's some things that are more attractive than others for sure. But you know, uh, but yeah, excellence is good. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, I do think there's a lot more to like this whole thing than just busting a nut. Right. Like, I think that, yeah, there's a lot of things that a w good woman slash woman can do for your life. And yeah, I, I would be really depressed if like someone told me for the rest of your life, all you're allowed to do is just fuck girls. And that's it. Like, you can't do anything else. I'd probably just choose one girl and call her whenever I have time. Yeah. The variety isn't about the sex because sex with most women is, is pretty, si I mean, it's similar enough. The man's in charge, so you dictate what sex is like. Some women are better in bed than others, fine. Yeah. But yeah, it's the it's the nuances uh, of the experience that I, that I, that I like. It's it's the differences in their personalities, the differences in in what they're like. You know, after sex, hanging around with them, the way they cook for you, the way they care for you. That's what I like, and that's why I like the variety. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, I mean, dude, awesome podcast. Thank you so much for coming on. Is there so? How can people find you? How can people support your work? Uh, a real pleasure, man. A real pleasure. You could find me if you want to find the players year. Uh, I tweet about it all the time, but that's at cobratake.com forward slash the players year. I think that that is one of the best examples of 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 performance in terms of you know a guy living the playboy life that you're ever going to find, uh, backed up by you know heaps and heaps of evidence. Uh, Instagram, you could find me at talisman tape. Talisman is my nickname. Twitter, I'm talisman underscore knows, but my Twitter disappears all the time. So we'll see if it, you know, is, is going to be there for long. Probably by the time you watch this podcast, if it's a few months down the road, Instagram is the way to go. Talisman Tate. Um, all of my knowledge and teachings are found within the war room. If you don't know what the war room is, follow me on Twitter or check out cobratate.com. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got to say. Thanks for me. Thanks for having me on the podcast. You know, great show. Yeah, 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 I, hope, I hope I shed some light on uh, a lot of things for a lot of guys. Oh, you definitely did. I think it was interesting, like, because you and I, we never really talked before this, and we grew up in completely different parts of the world with different lifestyles, but yet we've came to a lot of the same conclusions, pretty much exactly. all the same conclusions. The only thing I think you and I differ on is that I write out my goals, and I'm more like a little bit more structured, but that's yeah. like a small difference. Uh, so that was, that was very interesting to see. Uh, you know, that kind of commonality. And yeah, yeah. man, uh, this was the most live viewers I've ever had during an interview, so clearly a lot of people are passionate about what yeah, you It's nice. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thanks again, guys. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We got our cool, Donovan Sharp next week. So stay tuned for that. Until next time. Goodbye, everybody.